Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. This is information that is good for all of us. Eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a college kid with a maxed out charge card. And remember, life isn't fair, but it's still good. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. We need to call her with our Pledge of Allegiance. Come on now, dial the number. Thank you very much, Kate Smith, and God bless America. Good morning, everybody. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations with a big spring tire sale right now. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them. Get on the route service, 734-6969. And right now, our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. Well, there you are. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You know, Doug, I've got to get right into a weather forecast, but I've got a story, kind of a lead story, I'd like to have your opinion on. And not only your opinion in a couple of minutes, I might need you as a life preserver. <laughs> so give me a call back. Well, I'll stand beside you, buddy. <laughs> All right. I'll stand you. Thanks, Doug. I appreciate it. God bless you, man. Thanks. Oh, snow, snow, go away. It's been snowing here off and on for the last hour and a half. I've had enough. I tried my snow dance, my anti-snow dance the other day. Oh, no, yeah, 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 no. It didn't work. Anyway, I've had enough of winter and the weather this morning brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design. Yep, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look, look, look for that blue door. Number to call, 678-6945. Let me see what Whitney gave me for little tips today. She says, Bohem is coming in. Would somebody out there, I'm going to show some really ignorance here. I have no idea what Bohem is. Deanne, what's Bohem? It only takes a few bright, colorful textiles and some greenery, and you're ready for an up-to-date bedroom. Bohem. Well, you'd better call Cheney Flooring and Home Design. Stop in, 1228 Oakley Avenue, and they can tell you. Look for the blue door. What's Bohem, Deanne? You don't know. Okay. Well, we'll find out. Here's the weather. We'll be right back. Here's the weather. We'll be right back. about that, sir. They forgot to load the weather. And you didn't tell me. I, I apologize. Uh, weather forecast today, I think, is going to be tapering off in snow showers, and the highs only in the 30s today. But tomorrow, we get, uh, wheels make sure they get that weather done for the next hour. And uh, please uh, don't forget that uh, tomorrow we should start seeing some highs getting up into the 50s. So the weather hopefully is going to be straightening out, and including also our weather forecast. Cheney Flooring and Home Design. 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley, 6786945. Look for the blue door. Okay, really nice folks. Uh, don't forget, too, 
The Burley Livestock Sale, you're a great big sale coming up on Thursday at 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Number to call for cattle consignment information, sale information, 678-9411. Merv May, Cade Roggy, Lance Udy at the sale that works for you. Now, last week I called Merv and he gave me information that this week on Thursday they're really going to have some good, good stock cows coming in, various ages. One iron cattle, about 180 head of them in this partial dispersal so everybody put that on your calendar be there this thursday some really good stock cows going through the ring this thursday at the burley livestock sale yard sale time well we'll let you know on thursday at the burley location burley livestock sale yard 1100 occidental avenue in burley all right, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Give me a call. Now, I want to remind you, Lunch Bunch is coming up not this Thursday, next Thursday on the 16th, and it's going to be at 1130 at Denny's. And while I'm talking about Denny's, I might as well talk about Denny's. And, uh, boy, and by the way, did you know that today is National Pancake Day. It is. And, uh, boy, what a great uh, lead-up to stopping into Denny's Restaurant at America's Diner, 611 Overland and Burley, or 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. And don't forget all the different pancake breakfasts and the sizzling skillet meals. Oh, you name it, you can have it over at Denny's Restaurant. And nice people, great menu items. Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. And next Thursday on the 16th, we will be at Denny's for Lunch Bunch. By the way, too, if uh, your clothes are all rumply crumply and you went to the closet and said, holy buckets, I don't have any more shirts to wear, or the lady said, oh, my dresses, I put them all in a bag and I forgot to take them over to Daryl's Cleaners. Well, stop in today at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley, and they can clean your clothes so that they come out looking brand spanking new. Stop in and say hello to our dear friends today at Daryl's Cleaners, Kevin and Cindy, at 1223 Albion Avenue. Albion Avenue in Burley, Daryl's Cleaners, absolutely the best. A couple of quick shots here this morning. First and foremost, uh, as I said, today is National Pancake Day. And, oh, here's something that you got to call me. You know what? This male and female equality gender garbage has got to quit. You know what happened over in Melbourne, Australia? The women complained over in Melbourne because at the intersections, same as it is here in the United States, at the intersections in their towns, the little walking figure that comes on when it's okay for you to cross the intersection, they said, "Uh uh-uh, no, no, that's sexist. What? Yeah, the women complained over in Australia, and at a huge cost... To all the people living there, now it blinks male, female, female, male, female, male, male, female, goes back and forth. They had an addition. And the cost of doing that was absolutely enormous. Ridiculous. Oh, and also, this is one that you got to write down today. I'm going to be talking about that more later on this week. New York Education Office has scrapped, (laughs) you'll get a kick out of this one, they have scrapped the literacy test for teachers. (laughs) Oh, just when you thought the world could not get any dumber. Yep, New York Education Office scraps the literary test for teachers. And it's it's probably going to become very true that the students will be saying, no, no, Mr. Hannum, that's not right. Uh, that word is business. Spell it, please. I mean, this is ridiculous. Scrapping a literacy test for teachers. And some good news this morning. Exxon, thanks to the Trump administration, is planning on a 20 billion with a b 20 billion dollar investment here 
here in the United States, not over in Kuwait, not over in any uh, camel jockey country, but right here in the United States. And that's a 10-year investment program that's going to increase 45,000 jobs. Woo! Good for Exxon. Calls are welcome, 436 227 Four five eight seven, and uh, well, I'm going to get into a story in a minute, minute that I have a risk of uh, a lot of uh, hate and animosity geared at me by one portion of our audience, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Right now, Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, and they've got all, all, literally, of your heating and electrical needs. You know, I've had uh, John Paul stop over here many, many times and help fix various things, and they do a wonderful, wonderful job. And we're not done with the cold weather yet. You know, when you get out of bed and touch your toesies to the floor and go, whoo! Oh, baby, it's cold in here. Well, make sure you keep your furnace working correctly with all the furnace filters. They've got them at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. And they're open 730 to 5, Monday through Friday. Real quick, too, our friends at Barry Equipment and Rental. Holy cow, are they busy this time of the year. I don't care which location you're talking about. Barry Equipment and Rental on South Lincoln and Jerome and Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls. And, of course, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. They have all the equipment that you need. Deanne, just a minute, i got to have you do something for me. Uh, they have all the equipment you need to get the job done right. And they are thinking spring. And check out those walker mowers zero percent interest for 48 months use what the pros use and stop into berry equipment and rental check out those walker mowers jerome twin falls and 159 west highway 30 in burley berry equipment and rental by the way uh this next story as i said probably is going to get me in a little heat um i've got to make a little note here for deanne quickly uh, i will do that and she can call wheels and make sure that they get that taken care of for me immediately if you would please sweetie thank you uh tomorrow and um, like I said, I'm a little cautious about this because the gals in our audience, probably some of them that border on the women's lib side are going to get all upset, but that's okay. Tomorrow, another liberal Democrat fiasco. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but tomorrow has been deemed International Women's Day, which is fine, which is absolutely fine, but... Some of these groups have changed it to be a day without women. And they're going to be staging protests. And supposedly millions of women will not show up for their work. Now, my attitude is, okay, just like they did with the Day Without Immigrants, fire them. Fire them. In Alexandria, Virginia, women teachers are gone. They're going to take off tomorrow, regardless of whether they had any permission or not. And what about the students? What about the parents of the students? I mean, their kids are going to school. There's no teacher. I mean, what are they going to do? Send them back home? What's going to happen? And I say, fire them. What would happen... If the same idiocy and juvenile attitude started to permeate itself in the hospitals with the nurses, and they left the hospitals, they left the needy patients, uh, what about any other circumstance? This is stupid and selfish. What about a day without cooks at restaurants? What a day without uh, bank tellers. Or, you know, the list goes on and on. This idiocy has permeated itself in our society, and it's got to stop. And the one thing that really bugged me is that they say, let us raise our voices together again to say that women's rights are human rights. Well, naturally, and they are. 
And regardless of a woman's race, ethnicity, religion, immigration status, sexual identity, gender expression, economic status, age or disability, give me a break. Much ado about nothing. And I'm fed up with it. And guess who one of the major sponsors of this idiocy is? Yep, you're way ahead of me. Planned Parenthood. What are your thoughts about, uh, I, I think International Women's Day is great. And let me see what you wrote on the note. And okay, thank you. Uh, International Women's Day is great. And I think that uh, it's great for women to stand united, but not to cause misery, hardship, and strife. And say that, oh, we don't have any human rights. We don't have this baloney. They're telling the women to take the day off from paid and unpaid labor. They're asking women to avoid shopping at any stores tomorrow. And they're asking women to wear red in solidarity with a day without women. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your thoughts on this? Doug, now it's your turn to call. 436 224418669274587. Actually, I'd like some gals to call me. There are some really sharp ladies in our audience, and I'd like to hear from some of them, really, right now, over this day without women that's being promoted for tomorrow. I say, like in the case of the teachers, and if it permeates itself over into the medical industry with the nurses, fire them. What are your thoughts? Give me a call quickly. I'd like to hear from you. While I'm waiting for your call that I hope is coming in, I want you to be sure and remember our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. And the number to call is 678-1191. I'll say that number again in a moment. They are helping you get back to being you. Nick Greenwell, a physical therapist, all the physical therapists, with the exercises and the sports medicine and the hydrotherapy pool. I don't care if you're a year old or 96. They can help you, and they will. Call them, 678-1191, Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. You call them today. Come on, give me a call. What do you think, honestly, about that? National Day tomorrow, a day without women. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Is that my cue? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, personally, I don't think we need a, a day of, out of the year to appreciate women. I appreciate them every day. Absolutely. The best thing that ever happened to me. My mother was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I have sisters and friends that are women that... I hold in high esteem. So all they are is trying to disrupt. Absolutely. They're trying to get attention. They're trying to stall. This has been one of the worst deals for the Democrats to do because all they are, in my book and a lot of Americans, is putting a bad taste in everybody's mouth and turning away from them. Yeah, and you know, along with that uh, national International Women's Day tomorrow, and they changed it now where it's a day without women, the Clinton campaign, did you know this, that six former Hillary Clinton campaign operatives are playing key roles for one of the nation's most prominent anti-Trump organizations? They're going out and creating more furor. They're ca- causing more problems. They're being flies in the milk and all this kind of thing. Boy, what a great thing to be, a public disorganizer. Exactly. They ought to take Hillary Clinton's words... If you do not respect the outcome of this election, you are undemocratic. I'm listening. I'm listening. My wife was trying to talk to me, too, and in honor of National Women's Day, I had to pay attention to her first. <laughs> hey, honor, honor the wife first. I understand. All right, buddy, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead and say that. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't Hillary state that if you're paraphrasing that if you don't uh, honor the outcome of this election, you're undemocratic, or something to those words. Yeah. 
Doug, you know, bottom line is here this morning, we talked about this so much, it's like trying to whip a dead horse to get back on its feet. But the left right now, I mean, I hate to sound negative, and I want you to correct me if you feel like that I should be corrected. I'm starting to have a feeling. Like, if we don't stop this in the next 30 days, honestly, in the next 30 days, all this negativity, all these protesters, all this anti-Trump, all this stop Trump, all this uh, let's get him impeached and everything, I'm telling you what, it may have gone too far to where we've got such a divide in this country, I don't know what it's going to take except insurrection from the right to put down the left. Well, if you look at history in the past, when they tried to abolish slavery, they got so divided on it and so up in arms about it, we had a civil war. And this is what the left is pushing for again. Yeah. And they think they can win. With all those snowflakes out there that get upset over every little thing, you think they can take on a conservative? You know, and I really, I mean this when I say this, I hope there are some ladies out there in the audience that will call, I can think of about three or four that call in on a regular basis, and I'll bet you they're absolutely livid when they hear that uh, women school teachers are not going to show up for work, they're going to basically just abandon their classrooms, and I, I'll throw this at you, can you imagine the happy havoc and the hardship if the nursing industry pulled this kind of garbage yes they they would be abandoning their oath just like a lot of politicians have abandoned their oath i go along with that i agree with you i agree with their oath is to protect and save lives but then it, they don't show up. And then here, here's the bottom line, Doug, on this whole thing, and it's an organization that I absolutely detest because I value life and I especially value the lives of the unborn, and that is the fact that Planned Parenthood is the sponsor of this chaos. All the more reason in the new health care plan, they are going to defund Planned Parenthood. Exactly. And I've yet to have a liberal explain to me how if you kill a pregnant woman, it's a double homicide. But taking an abortion isn't murder. Yeah, yeah. And nobody can explain that. Well, they don't. It's not that they can't. It's not that they don't want to elevate, or I should say, put themselves on a scale to where they're going to be criticized for their stupid remarks. Well, you got a point there, buddy. All right. And remember, everybody. Let's take care of our senior centers. All right. Let's help them out, join them, donate monetarily if you can. All right, Doug. Thank you for your call, buddy. I always appreciate it. Thank you. I'd like to get some women to call in this morning. I know there are some brave women in this area that they don't care if their neighbors hear them or not. They're going to speak their minds. Well, right now I want you to speak your minds. That is what I want for the next call. I want some ladies that are going to speak on this subject. If you think I'm wrong, I'll take your negative remarks. I will. If you think I'm right. Let me have your opinion. I want to hear from you. Right now, I want to talk about Mont Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Uh, Dr. Christine Pickup, what a wonderful lady, and she is so smart when it comes to hearing and sounds and communication. Oh, my goodness. If you're noticing some hearing loss, I urge you. I, I really underline that word, urge you to get a hold of her today. And they're located right across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids and the number 3120957 3120957 make an appointment for a hearing screening today Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids with Dr. Christine Pickup absolutely the best all right, your turn. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Come on, gals. I know you're out there. I'm thinking of some first names of a lot of them that I would love to have call. Give me a jingle and let me think. What do you think about this? A day without women. We're going to go on strike. We're not going to do anything but create havoc. Oh, boy, that's going to make for a lot of good things to happen, isn't it? Fire them. That's what my stand is fire them it's very selfish and very stupid this movement aided and abetted by the money from Planned Parenthood actually 
aided and abetted by your money and my money through Planned Parenthood because of the huge stipend that they get from our government. Calls are welcome. Come on, give me a jingle. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Please give me a call. In other news, let's take a look here real quick. Uh, Obamacare is on life support and just about ready to die and be buried i would like to dig the hole and bury it myself the however however i've got to get this in the new what they call american health care plan from the republicans is they say almost ready to kind of strut out in front of the congress and the public for scrutiny. Now, some say, and I've heard and talked to some of these people, some say this American health care plan is nothing more than Obamacare light. That's what they're calling it, Obamacare light, with some major cutbacks, but not enough coverage. Okay, now I'm going to issue an opinion here, and again, it's open for your scrutiny and your criticism. I personally feel, my wife and I talked about this at great length last night, I feel the Republicans should say we're going to have a six-month study program, a six-month diligent study program of this proposed plan, the American Health Care Plan, and check for potholes. And believe me, they're going to find some potholes. But to rush it through just for the sake of saying, well, we replaced Obamacare. It's only been after the first month and a half of the Trump administration. Look at us. We were tremendous. This could end up for the Republicans one of the biggest disasters and one of the biggest jokes. And nobody's going to laugh that ever happened. I think they need to pass of the time and the effort to make sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and they look for any potential problems, any disasters, any lack of coverage, any devastating effects to senior citizens, any negativity towards young families trying to get started in this great country. They need to check everything and not pull a nancy pelosi and say well we passed the bill and now we're going to read it to find out what's in it that is complete lunacy and if the republicans are guilty of that and they do that they will get the ire of this program the same as we gave the democrats for years this is ridiculous just to throw something on the skillet and expect it to turn out to be a gourmet meal. Ain't going to happen. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Come on, give me a call. What's the matter? Everybody mad out there? I mean, are all the women just fuming at me this morning? Good morning, you're on the air. Well, good morning, Mr. Rant and Rave. Well, good morning, Miss Pick on Me Like a Big Pimple. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was told to, sort of. <laughs> you were what? Not rude. I'm just joking. You know, the, this stuff with this Women's Day and and all this crap, um, the, what are we trying to prove? I, I, I guess, you know, being a woman, I guess I'm, I'm stupid. I don't understand. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, my dear friend, and I love you to death. But you brought up an excellent point. What are these women trying to prove? What are they saying that they're not getting? What are they saying they're not being treated fairly on? Please, I'm subjective to whatever you say. I'm going to just absolutely listen. Tell me how we, the male part of our society, are treating you poorly. You know what? That's what I don't understand. Um, you know, George has his faults. We all do. You know, none of us are perfect, but um, 
I have no complaints about the way I'm being treated by, you know, by my husband, by my brothers, um, by my my friends. You treat me with the utmost respect, and and our other friends do the same thing. I just don't understand why we have to stand up and protest every dadgum thing that somebody sneezes out of their brain cell. You know, Donna, I am so appreciative of your remarks. I, I really mean that. I am appreciative. But you know something? I'm going to talk about a little story that I've talked about before on this program. This women's liberation, this I am woman, hear me roar attitude, actually it just makes me nothing more than mad. And I'll tell you why. A couple of years ago, I was in Twin Falls going into the Twin Falls County Courthouse. And coming up the steps behind me, and I'm slow going up steps, I make no bones about it, was a quote-unquote lady. I got to the top step, I opened the door and held it for her, and she said, If you don't mind... I can open my own doors, and she just brusquely walked in. Is that the attitude they want, that they don't need any help, that they don't need any chivalry, that they don't need any manners? I'm fed up with that attitude. Well, I am, too. You know, and and sometimes it's really an embarrassment. Um, You know, they they come out and try to, 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 to represent all women. They don't represent me in the in the least. Um, I I do my own thing, and I don't mind opening my own door on occasion. But it's nice when a gentleman opens the door for you, or pulls out your chair as you're sitting down, or you know compliments you on your hairdo or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm proud to be a woman. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm proud to be a woman. Um, that's the way God made me. Um, and. If I'd have known I was going to live this long, I'd have taken a heck of a lot better care of my body. But other than that, I'm happy with who I am. Well, let me ask you this, though. I don't understand why we have to stand up and protest. And and if these women do take the day off without notifying their their, um, uh, bosses or whatever, they should be fired. Okay, real quick, real quick, answer this real fast, because I've got another call waiting, Donna, real fast. What about this fact of carrying over into education, where like in Alexandria, Virginia, a real large school district, the teachers, the ma- the female teachers, they're just not going to show up? That's ridiculous. It is. Um, I hope they have sub- substitutes lined up. Um, uh, because the kids are the ones that are going to suffer. And, and for a foolish, I mean, uh, celebrate who who you are and, you know, to heck with all this other rubbish. Um, uh, get back to work and do your jobs. Amen. Donna, God bless you. And please do me a favor. Turn around, walk about 35 steps, and get George out of bed. Thank you. Okay. okay. I'll do it. Have a good day. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Caller number two, stay there. I'm going to do a quick ad, and I'm going to be right with you. You are next. Don't go away. Ag Express is looking for drivers. Yes, they are. Full and part-time positions are available. Retired folks, hey, come on. This is a great opportunity for you, too. Whatever works best for you, they'll work around your schedule. That's right. They've got great equipment, new and maintained equipment. They've got a great benefit program, vacations, uh, 401k plans. They've got it all for you at Ag Express. Call them today. Call Dale and Paul at 438-8886. Allen in Twin Falls at 731-2495. And Russ and Burley at 431-7175. Ag Express, looking for drivers. You better give them a call today. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. Good to hear your voice. Thank you, Jerry. What can I do for you, buddy? Well, I called Russell yesterday and talked to him for a while, and I just thought I'd give a Russell report. All right, quickly. Go ahead, please. He's doing pretty darn good. Okay. He's getting fed good. He's still a happy guy. Jerry, doesn't he have... Come and see him, and he really appreciates it. Jerry, let me ask you a question. Jerry, let me ask you... <laughs> Jerry, let me ask you a question real quick. Wait a minute. We can't keep running. Jerry, just hold on a second. Don't say anymore. Let me get in here. I want to talk to you a little bit. Isn't he got a birthday coming up pretty quick? Well, it's getting close. Okay. I can't remember exactly when. 
I'd have to check my calendar. All right. Well, I appreciate that. And when you talk to him again, my dear friend, you tell him that Zevin Goober said, howdy, and glad he's feeling okay, all right? And I told him I was going to call Zeb and Goober and let him know how he was doing. Okay. Well. well I did include you in the call. <laughs> okay. I also included Donna and George. Very good. You know, they're two of my favorite people, too. All right, Jerry, thank you. Anyway, I'll get out of your way. You have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless you and your whole audience, everybody around you, and let's keep America great. I appreciate it. Than it's ever been in the history of the world. All right. This is the greatest country in the world. We need to treat it like the greatest country in the world. We need to treat everybody in it like we are the greatest. Absolutely. Let's leave it that way. Let's quit being pessimists. All right, Jerry. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. God bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hey, now listen, I've been talking, and I'm going to tie these both together this morning. I am pro-women and absolutely pro uh, these beautiful gals, all the work they do, whether it's a nursing, whether it's an education, name any field. I'm saying this with my wife standing three feet away from me right now with a great big Hillrick Bradsby baseball bat in her hand. But you know what? This is, this is the positive side of everything. There is going to be a Southern Idaho Women's Expo, and that's going to be on April 13th at the Best Western Burley Inn in Burley. But they need vendors. You know, business people, listen to me. You need to have your business represented there as a business because maybe your competitor is going to be there and you're sitting there at home going, oh, boy, did we make a mistake not by not being there. Well, all you got to do is call 679-4793, 679-4793 for booth registration for the Southern Idaho Women's Expo. This is positive. This is good. And you need to be there, vendors, 679-4793, and it's coming up on April 13th. There you go. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I have a little news note here for perhaps the city of Twin Falls. Perhaps... The College of Southern Idaho Refugee Center, and most definitely to the Times News. Just a little fact, as I get the paper out here, 300 refugees. Let me say that number again. 300 refugees are now being investigated by the FBI for terrorism. I just thought I'd throw that out. The Federal Bureau of Investigation is investigating approximately 300 refugees in the United States. It didn't specify what particular area, might even be here, for terrorism. That's according to a report from the Department of Homeland Security. The official from the Department of Homeland Security said this was, quote, truly an alarming number. And added, there are also approximately, listen to this, 1,000 investigations into potential domestic terrorism inspired or motivated by ISIS. Oh, gosh. You're saying, well, it's only 300? Don't be ridiculous. This is very, very serious. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Well, that's the thing about it. It always it just takes one or two, three hundred, a thousand. I mean, the potential is really quite frightening. But see, you and I are called alarmists. Oh yeah. We're called. Go ahead. Oh no, I was I was agreeing with you. You said alarmists, oh, and I was going to throw in bigots, and we're hate mongers, and we're all kinds of negative things. But you know what? We are also concerned parents leaders of communities, and American citizens that want to make sure we stay safe. You know, every day, Zeb, I pray for my children, my grandchildren, and my children's spouses. And I have a process, you know. I pray for my wife and I that we will, the Spirit will guide, direct, protect, and bless us in the same way with my children. Because 
God forbid, anything happens to my children or my grandchildren. I, I, God forbid. And, and, and if it did because of somebody's fast and free decisions about, you know, deciding whether or not we are going to cater to these Muslims because we want to do, you know, be caring and, you know, it's, you're not taking my children or my life in your hands because you don't care. Yeah. Because you're trying to be politically correct. Well, you know, you say to yourself, am I angry some days? Yes. Because, you know, the first thing the government is supposed to do is protect the people. That is the number one thing. And, and in this case, you know, they're here. Well, wait a minute, Randy. They into your, they're in your, they live in your upstairs, Deb. They're living up there. Yeah. And you never know when, what day, what morning they might wake up and change their, you know, have an epiphany and decide they changed their mind. Or, you know, when you've been raised differently. You know, you and I have no idea what it's like to be raised in a, in a radically Muslim environment. Well, listen to this, though. You are Americans who, who had loving mothers and fathers and... And, and 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 we love our our wives and our children. Yeah. And and this kind of chaotic BS coming from this last administration is unacceptable. Well, listen to this. By the way, did you hear when Valerie Jarrett moved in to with you know uh, Barack and Michelle? Uh, I've already had. Wait a minute, Randy. Liam, Randy. Randy, you got to give me a chance to talk. I got to have a chance to have some back and forth with you. You can't be just one sided. OK, um, yes, we had that story on the air exclusively this last week about uh, Valerie becoming a threesome with uh, Michelle and Brock. Yes. And trying to plan out different things to disrupt and totally dismantle the Trump organization. But I want to stay with what I'm talking about right now. And more than just a minute, more than forty three hundred refugees have entered the country in this past month alone since a federal judge blocked President Trump's previous order. This new executive order will be effective on March 16th, and during the halt in refugee entry, listen to this last line of this paragraph. It's very serious. The government will review vetting procedures. Well, it's about time, isn't it? Oh, my word. See... It, it's so, it's it's like, it's such risky business. You know, you know they, they can call us names. But you see, all it takes is, is one. I mean, it, you know, see, we just have no idea what's going on in the head of these people. Yeah. And, and, and you and I are, we, we live amongst the folks here, man. We drive down the road, we go to the store, we... Go to the restaurant. We go to the movie, maybe, whatever. Well, I personally, you know, you're, you're my, you know, it's just it's scary. Know, Deb, I've said way too much, and I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, that's all right. But we got to have a give and take on these conversations, so we got time to get everything in. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, All right, buddy. Uh, you know, when, when you call callers, you know, and you and you make a pause in between your sentences, that to me is an invitation for me to respond. And then you start up, and we walk all over each other. So if you're going to make a definitive statement, make it. I absolutely love and relish your calls, but I got to have a chance to jump in so we can have a two sided conversation. So please remember that. I appreciate it. Time for the weather, and the weather brought to you by the Urgent Cares Riverview Urgent Care, three eighty two North Overland and Burley. Twin Falls Urgent Care, 2392 Addison Avenue East in Twin Falls, and Jerome Urgent Care, 133 West Avenue A in Jerome. Open seven days a week. Minor emergencies to you and your family. Major care. I mean, whether you got the flu or a sinus infection or you got a real bad cut or a scrape or a strain, sprain, whatever, they can help you at the Urgent Cares. And right now, here's the weather. Here is your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch. We are looking at uh, afternoon rain showers. We're going to see some sunshine at least through the morning time, and then more clouds are going to be rolling in. 50% chance of afternoon rain showers for today, high of 43. Tonight we do have a 50% chance of rain showers with a low of 38. For tomorrow, partly cloudy skies, high of 52. And then for Thursday, bridging nearly 
60 degrees, mostly cloudy skies, high 57. That is your weather for us, Evan Rand. I appreciate it, Gina. Thank you, and brought to you by the Urgent Cares. Riverview Urgent Care in Burley, Twin Falls Urgent Care Twin, and Jerome Urgent Care Naturally in Jerome. Minor emergencies, major care. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I don't know if uh, a lot of you folks remember the case. I'm certain many, many do. The case about Casey Anthony, and allegedly she killed her daughter and hid the body. Casey Anthony's daughter would have been 12 years old today. And there was an interview. This i got to really measure my words here, folks, because I was so mad. Some of the verbiage that I used uh, off microphone early this morning was not acceptable for family broadcasting. But uh, she was interviewed about her daughter, that uh, very, very possibly now with all regrouping of the facts, etc., yes, she did kill her daughter. And even the judge has recanted his remarks and said yes. Well, she's speaking out and using some of the filthiest language in an interview about her past and her daughter and she was very proud in this interview. You can <clears throat> tell the pride in her voice that she has lied all of her life, especially to police and people in authority. And she says, I lied to the police and I lied to them every day. She doesn't care. And she was asked if she sleeps well at night, evidently, uh, you know, going back to what she did, allegedly, and how hard it must be to try to get a night's sleep, knowing that she probably and did kill her daughter. And she says, I sleep pretty blank, blank, well. There is, in my opinion, a special place in hell for this kind of a person. She was a party girl. And that little daughter was infringing on her, the mother's, Casey Anderson, or Anthony's, party time. And all the facts and the trial and everything came out, and people were just hanging their heads and shaking them in disgust as to how this mother using the term very loosely, could do this. And now, all these years after the fact, and she is still lying, still benefiting from gain that she gets from those lies, and doesn't care at all about that little girl. That's a hard pill to swallow. It really is. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Doing the right thing matters. Now, come on, you stop in there at any one of the seven locations here in the Magic Valley, and they're having a great big spring tire sale. Oh, my goodness sakes. You better stop in and check out, like, the Eclipse tire for your cars. All-season traction, advanced tread design. Ooh, it's on sale right now. And the best in brake service. Oh, those folks know brakes. Front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, everything. And above all, the best, as I've said a thousand times, in service. They really take care of you. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line and Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Caller, thank you. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, I thought you were describing my ex-wife, and uh, that's why my son's dead, too, so... I just wanted to say that. Thanks. Bye. Well, that's a horrific story, and I certainly 
Uh, I'm not even going to issue a comment on that because I don't know the situation, and all I can say is uh, my prayers and my thoughts are with that individual. And there is nothing that should be said at this juncture over something as horrendous as that. We're going to take a little bit of a break, and uh, we'll look forward to, you know, I, I want to go back to the callers calling in on this program. This program is for you. I appreciate each and every one of you folks, and I know most of you by your first names, and, and God bless you. I appreciate your thoughts. Don't we can keep calling, because we got to have a give and take on what's going on with the issues today, and maybe we can rectify some of these problems. I certainly hope so. Let's see what else is real quick. i got to get in the news here this morning. Uh, we talked about... About the uh, American health care. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's see. Planned Parenthood. Yeah, we talked about that. Uh, I think I covered everything. And coming up next hour, we've got my dear, dear friend, Frosty Woldridge. And then at 930, Craig Richardson, president of the Energy and Environmental Legal Institute. And boy, we got a full slate. Dr. History at 1006 this morning. You be listening. Wheels, take it away. We'll be back after the CBS News. Oh, kind of a funny sky out there. I've seen some clouds. I've seen a little bit of snow. And way off in the dirt, uh, yeah, over on the north side, they got blue sky. So I don't know what's going on. Wacky, wacky weather day. Good morning, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations with a great big spring tire sale. Love that word, spring. And along with some of our great advertisers like Western Waste Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're all in the Jordan Circle. Western Waste Services, we care about our community, our resources, and this free land. Western Waste Services is lending a hand, always at Jordan Circle. Western Waste Western Way Services, we talk about the weekly garbage service, picking it up and getting it out of there. We talk about all the dumpsters. We talk about all the porta potties. We talk about all, of course, the uh, Go Minis, the portable storage units. Holy smokes. So many things. So many things to help your life go better. Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Give them a call today at 734 6969. West Western Waste Services. Also, I want to acknowledge some really, really nice people, and I've got to get them back on my program and talk about pets and livestock and everything. Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street in Hayburn. Number to call, 678-1177. They have warm hearts for cold noses. That's right. They love animals, and they love taking care of animals. Dr. Bill, Dr. Liz, the whole crew. And it's a mixed animal practice. This meaning big or small, little dogs, kitty cats, great big cows, horses, everything else. They love them all and take care of them at Ark Animal Hospital, 750 21st Street in Hayburn, 678-1177. Right now, let's go to the phone line. And a very dear friend with me on the program, and I've got a lot of subject matter to get into this morning with him. Good morning, Frosty Woldridge. How are you? And good morning, Zeb. It's a pleasure, sir, and to everyone listening, a happy March. And, uh, boy, things are moving, and let's get to it. Frosty, uh, I'll make no bones about this, and you and I have known each other for years and years and years, but these anti-Trump protesters, the beating of elderly people and the knocking down of elderly women and the hitting with placards, etc., a woman, mother of four in Berkeley, all they were doing is very peacefully saying how they support this new administration and support the new president, and they're beaten by the vile, sinister left. I've had enough, and I've made this statement on my program before, and I want you to respond to it. These anti-almost-anything American protesters, if they are in your way, if they are blocking the streets, if they are causing harassment, I say do not step around them, step over them. Your remarks. Well, there's no question that uh, 
you're, you're now seeing the loss of civil society. Uh, we are a country where anyone can stand up and speak out, uh, and they are protected by the Constitution from bodily harm. It's called assault and battery if you attack anyone, and you can go to jail. And absolutely for certain, uh, we need to have uh, the rule of law uh, reintroduced into America after it has not been, uh, certainly has not been uh, enforced certainly the last eight years, and we need to have civil liberty, you know, your civil liberties uh, to to uh, demonstrate and to speak your peace and to, uh, you know, walk up and down the streets of your city to make your feelings felt, and you should not be in harm's way. And so it, it really is a part of what needs to be done uh, as to police enforcement, and we need to absolutely support all police efforts to stop this kind of violence. I want to throw this at you. I'm going to shotgun everything this morning, Frosty, because we got so much to talk about. The FBI, and this is a subject that you are very well versed in. The FBI is investigating right now about 300 refugees that they have found have come here to the United States and may very likely be involved in terrorist activities. This is from a report from the Homeland Security officials, and they said that it is truly an alarming number. Frosty, I told you, you told me, we told everybody, look out, this thing's going to come back to haunt us, and it is. And it is, and it's here. I really want to make everyone aware of the fact that these 300 refugees are now subject to the FBI terror investigations. In other words, these are uh, terrorists that have gotten through. Uh, Barack Obama brought in over 12,000 Syrian refugees last year, and <clears throat> you know that among those refugees are terrorists because they're Syrians, because they are Muslims, and because they're now here, we are subject to another Orlando or another San Bernardino and right on down the line. And so the reality is, <clears throat> if we fail to stop this Syrian refugee uh, Im input into our country, this importation of all these refugees, we're going to see more and more uh, Muslim uh, terrorist attacks here in America there, because the fact is, there's no way that you can monitor all of the terrorists. And again, for those of you who haven't seen it on some of my columns, uh, we have 22 terrorist training camps in the United States, Islamic terrorist training camps that's validated. Uh, uh, Michael Lynch, uh, Dennis Michael Lynch, of course, is the one who has been doing all the photography on that. But those are the realities that we face right now. And those terrorist training camps are allowed because our government is doing nothing to stop them because they're on private property. But again, they are in violation of the McCarran-Walter Act of 1952. We should be able to go in there, raid them, shut them down, and deport every one of those terrorists that are in those training camps because at some point... Uh, they're going to unleash themselves on us at some point. Yeah, and you know, here's what was really scary to me later on in this story. And again, I know you know this, but I'm just reiterating it for my audience. More than, listen to this number, more than 4,300 refugees entered the country this past 30 days since a federal judge blocked President Trump's previous order to stop refugee entry. Well, now they're consenting to the fact that, oh, maybe the government better review vetting procedures because maybe they let some people fall through the cracks. Yeah, to the tune of at least 300 in the last little bit of uh, history. This is becoming very serious. Well, it's more than serious, uh, uh, because the fact is, when you bring in these refugees, you are absolutely bringing in i gotta tell you the vetting process is a farce it is a lie it is a duplistic charade to think that you can look at the background of all of these people in a place like syria where no one has a history or a background or an id card or anything is absolutely absurd uh, the american public is being sold a bill of goods and literally we're importing our, our, our Congress, 
your two senators, House Rep, right on down the line, are doing nothing to stop the importation of all these refugees, and we are guaranteed to have more terrorists invented in our country because of this importation of all these refugees. You know, you know, it's, it's a guaranteed fact. Americans are going to die in another San Bernardino, another Boston Marathon, another Chattanooga. Uh, you go right on down the line. It's going to happen because of what Congress is allowing to happen and what Barack Obama allowed to happen, and even what Judge Robart stopped the latest uh, uh, executive order, uh, th- those are the people responsible, and those are the Americans that are literally destroying we the people. Yeah, Frosty, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to ask legitimate questions about the vetting process. Back in January... I talked off this program, it wasn't on the air, with a former Homeland Department official that said the vetting process in many cases was nothing more than what is your name? Where are you from? What did you do? I know that sounds simplistic, but these people are coming here with nothing more than perhaps a suitcase or a knapsack. They do not have any files or computer registrations of counties, where they live, what they did. I mean, in most cases, Frosty, we're taking them for their word. No, most cases, just about every case, we're taking them for their word because, again... There is no way to vet anyone from Africa. You have no idea what they did, where they're from, how they are from, what their thoughts are. They can lie, they can lie and lie and lie, and they get through because the vetting process cannot screen uh, terrorists from regular refugees. And again, why are we as a country responsible for the rest of the refugees of the world We take in 100,000 legal refugees every month, over 1.5 million per year. And as you said, uh, 500,000 illegals are coming across the border every year, according to Dr. Camerata there at CIS.org. You can see that. It's verified. And that's what's happening. Again, I am all for building that wall, chain link fence, moats. I don't care. We need to protect our country and our citizens, and we are tired of being the dumping ground for all of the rest of the world's desperate refugees. They need to solve their own problems in their own countries, and we can't solve it for them. We certainly are creating the chaos of our own country uh, as we continue to import them into our country. This is a living nightmare, and we are living it. We've got to stop it. Donald Trump is the best hope for the United States to stop it. And the rest of our best hope is to keep calling your senators, telling them to shut down all immigration so that we don't have this crisis facing our children. You know, on a little bit of a lighter note, and I caution myself for even using the word lighter when I finish what I'm going to say to you, uh, Donald Trump is being blamed for literally everything. In the last 45 days, I think Donald Trump is absolutely getting the blame for if the weather's bad, it's Trump's fault. But now, Frosty, Barbara Streisand, you remember Babs. She, of course, said that if Donald Trump won the election, she would leave America. Well, Babs is still here, Frosty, my dear friend. And now she is saying that because Donald Trump has been elected president, that's the reason she has developed into a Goodyear blimp and put on a lot of weight. She says, I've got such a nervous reaction against him being president, I just can't stop eating and it's his fault oh poor babs your comment well you know whether it's barbara streisand or whoopi goldberg or miley cyrus or you can go right on down the line uh, uh, bear there at the view and and all of these these people that don't ever because of the financial uh, uh, and the big gates around their compounds where they live in Hollywood. These people never get down to the true what's happening to American citizens and, and communities that are being destroyed, whether it's Lewiston, Maine, or whether it's Fremont, California, or whether if you look at what's happened to New York, again, almost 40% of New York is now foreign-born. Uh, and, and again, you, you look at 800 different languages being spoken in New York uh, as a daily course of, of, of reality. Uh, Folks, we're losing our country, our ethos, our language, our way of life, because we have allowed these people like McCain or like Charles Schumer and and the rest of them 
uh, to simply let our country be overwhelmed. And then you have these, these Hollywood types, whether it's the George Looney, I mean Clooney, uh, you know, these people are out of touch with what's really going on with Americans and how our society and how our communities are being destroyed by mass immigration. And, you know, and then, of course, she's getting fat because of Trump. I mean, she's getting fat because she's eating too much and she's not exercising enough. So that's the reality. And cry me a river of tears for, for uh, Barbara Streisand. Oh, I will. I will. I'll work on that after the program. I'll sit down and give that due diligence. Um, I want to Thank talk to you. Very much. I want to get back to a real serious subject this morning, and I'm going to first of all tell you where I'm coming from, and if you disagree with me, we're good enough friends that we can have a give and take on this. I honestly agree that I think Obama's administration performed a lot of illegalities and a lot of eavesdropping, and yes, even using the word spying, on Donald Trump prior to the election. I honestly believe that they were trying to do everything they could to cover their tracks, and I believe that the wiretapping issue with the Trump Tower and Donald Trump will come out and show without a shadow of a doubt that Barack Obama was behind it. Your thoughts? Do you think I'm nuts or what? Uh, you, you are right spot on. Uh, Dennis Michael Lynch, who's, uh, I mean, I've got a lot of, this guy is a lot like me, and I'm a lot like him. He's just got the camera. I've got the words and the observations. And he is really coming to the forefront here, and I think history is going to show that Barack Obama was wiretapping and everything that's going on, whether it's Comey and all the rest of them, we can no longer trust them to be in, in the good uh, auspices of the American people. There's a lot of stuff going on up there, and the fact is that Donald Trump is being blamed for everything, when in fact he is shaking up the U.S. corrupt government that has been literally been created over the last 40 years, and, and so, of course, they're doing everything they can to demean him uh, and delegitimize him, and so I think you're absolutely correct. At some point, uh, the reality will be that there was wiretapping and there was all sorts of skullduggery going on. It all goes down to Barack Obama. You know, I think what's happening here in this country, and I'll tie this into the last story that we talked about, with the protests, the dissension, the uh, the thuggery of beating uh, senior citizens that are just doing nothing more than saying they support the president and his new administration, the anti-American activities uh, supported by the left and, yes, by liberal Democrats. It's got to stop soon, Frosty. It's got to stop very very soon, or this administration will be completely hamstrung and trying to do things for our economy, trying to do things for our security, and trying to do things for the betterment of America. The liberal left are nothing more than crooks and thugs and punks that are trying to slow everything down. Well, that's being shown, and in fact, I have a new piece on term limits. It's at newswithviews.com or Capitol Hill Outsider. It's this morning, this morning, and it's called Term Limits. Uh, we, we, you know, one of the congressmen in Michigan is 87 years old. You know, I mean, come on, 87 years old? He, he just keeps getting elected and doing nothing. If you keep electing the same old people, they're going to keep doing the same old thing, whether it's 80-year-old John McCain or, or Schumer or, or Barbara Boxer in California or Feinstein in California or, you know, right, you know, McCain in Arizona. We need to have a term limits to get refreshment of minds and bodies and you know, innovative ideas that fit the 21st century in this country. And we need, we absolutely need the rule of law to maintain order and civil, uh, civil discourse in this country. And, uh, and again, you know, I just, I got a new thing in for Cheryl Atkinson, who I have a great deal of, of appreciation for as, as a great reporter. She's already found out that the feds were hacking into uh, the, the, the Trump campaign and was all uh, uh, to protect Obama, and even CBS is a part of this. I'm going to follow this thread, and maybe we'll have another talk next week. But the fact is, you're right. If we don't main civil order, if we don't have the rule of law maintained, then you've got the, the Black Lives Matter going out smashing, bashing, and crashing everything. You've got these anti-Trump demonstrators from the far left or even the left, who are absolutely a bunch of, of hoodlums getting away with it. We, we need to put them in jail. We need to maintain the rule of law in our country if we're going to have a civil 
uh, and, 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 and a rule of law country. Otherwise, we have anarchy, and anarchy will not, uh, we won't survive that kind of a, of a country. Okay, now we're down to the last five minutes of the segment, Frosty, and it's not fair to have you uh, kind of give us a synopsis of your thoughts on this, but I know you're capable of doing this. I think, and I've got a list, and I'm going to be probably sending it to you, of ideas on how we need immigration reform and how it can be constructed in a very useful manner for America and our economy. I would like you, I I don't understand what the problem is, really, between our Congress, whether they're Republican or Democrat, our Senate, same thing, or even this new administration. I don't understand why we have such a problem with immigration reform, because to me, in the way I figured it out on my papers, if you will, it's not that unsolvable if they just get their heads together, keep their mouths shut, and try to work together. Well, Ben Franklin said it. If we're going to have this a great constitutional republic, we have to compromise. Madison knew it. Uh, John Adams knew it. Certainly George Washington knew it. And certainly did uh, Thomas Jefferson. And so these people in the 21st century here, this Congress needs to get together. Uh, again, I've said it. We don't need another 100 million immigrants. So we need to rescind the 1965 Immigration Reform Act, or we're going to get another 100 million legal immigrants. There's no way to survive the numbers environmentally, quality of life, standard of living. So, yes, it is simple. But uh, as in all politics, there's nothing really sane or rational in politics because it's a whole new can of worms. And there are reasons why we still have anchor babies at 350,000 per year, uh, illegal mothers having their children on our soil. Why hasn't that uh, misinterpretation of the 14th Amendment been changed? Well, it's because somebody up there in Washington is either making a lot of money or literally can't wait to cheat the system further or cheat the American people. And why we're allowing another a million legal immigrants in every year, somebody up there is doing it. Somebody is making sure that there's not a clamp down. I don't know who it is, but it's somebody. And to allow 500,000 illegals to come across our borders every year, that's what's going on. Somebody needs to stop that. The best hope of this thing right now is Donald Trump, because it certainly isn't Congress. Congress hasn't done anything about immigration in 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, or the last 10 years. The same stuff that's been going on is still going on, because these senators and these House reps are not doing anything to change it. I agree. Wow. A half hour goes way too fast with you, my friend. Frosty Woldridge, Golden, Colorado. I wish you the best, and I'll look forward to next Tuesday. Thanks, Frosty. I appreciate it, buddy. Have a good week. Godspeed, Zip. All right, thank you. Good, good friend. Very good friend. And I appreciate him being on the program this morning, Frosty Woolridge. You know, when you talk about good people and and people that are really dedicated to serving their community, you have to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, Joel Heward, manager of Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert. His family, his staff, all of them working and serving you and your family. When there's the passing of a loved one, they will travel to the rural towns and churches to help you with all the arrangements, always upholding the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Please remember the number and give them a call. They want to serve you, and they will. 436-5636. That number again, 436-5636. Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. Now, I mentioned last hour, and I'm going to be mentioning this for quite a few days, excuse me, that uh, coming up on April 13th, the Southern Idaho Women's Expo, sponsored by the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, Idaho Central Credit Union, and Idaho Housing and Finance at the Burley Best Western Inn. But you know what? It's such a huge event that they have a lot of vendors. A lot of businesses come down there, set up a booth, show their wares. They know that this is an excellent opportunity for their business to be basically focused on. So, vendors, now is the time. Right now is the time to call the Chamber of Commerce office at 679-4793. That number again, 679-4793, and arrange for your booth for that Southern Idaho Women's Expo. Don't miss it. If your competition's there and you're not, 
They win. You lose. Give them a call today. All right, calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I think we got a guest on the line in just a moment. Let me check with Wheels. Wheels old Podna is our guest with us? Yes, sir, he is. All right, well, I'll get right to him, so stand by. But first and foremost, I want to remind everybody about Let's Ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. And you know what? If you want to get ready for spring and really push the envelope to the point where, yeah, I'm thinking spring, here's what I need to do, well, take your four-wheelers over there right now and get them serviced in their great service department, and then you'll be ready. Absolutely great service department. They've got all the accessories over there, and boy, on the showroom floor, you've got to stop in and take a look. I don't know how they cram so many machines in on that showroom floor, but it's unbelievable. Let's ride. Two 70 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world where the fun is sold. Really good folks. And by the way, too, I don't want you to sit back and say, oh, well, I'll take care of it next week. Oh, well, I'll give them a call in a couple of days. No, 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 no. You do this right now. You call Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert, for your life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits. That's what they're there for, and they will help you. They're very dedicated and responsive to your needs. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Number to call, 436-4424. You call them now. Okay, let's go to the phone line, and uh, we've had uh, some segments on this issue in the last couple of weeks, but I wanted to get Craig Richardson, the president of the Energy and Environmental Legal Institute, on our program to talk about this, and that is the um, presidential executive order instructing that the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers review the waters of the United States rule. And there's going to be some big cutbacks. Craig Richardson, good morning to you, sir. How are you? Morning, Sam. How have you been? Not too bad. Craig, I have said ever since this WOTUS rule came into effect that it was one of the dumbest and one of the most... uh, Oh, let's say criminalizing activities that could ever be put upon farmers and ranchers or anyone. Maybe they got a little puddle in their backyard and the EPA wanted to basically come in and legislate and potentially fine anyone for that water. Why don't you elaborate on it a little bit? How absolutely damning was that uh, WOTUS rule? Well, absolutely. I think it's, you know, one of the most which is why President Trump made it a keystone of his campaign. It was one of the most, as you said, overreached by the federal government. I mean, let's, let's face it, this had nothing to do with clean air or clean water, which sadly the EPA over the last eight years in particular, and probably longer, ha- has nothing to do with clean air and clean water. It has to do with the federal government using, weaponizing its various agencies, and, and the EPA in particular, so they can curtail people's property rights, the ability for them to use... Uh, to run a small business, whether it's a farm or whatever else they have on their own property. It is essentially a federal land grab, and not just at a state level, but at a private level, which makes it even that much scarier. The thing I've said, Craig, and correct me if you think I'm wrong on my terminology, but I have said the EPA and the environmental movement in general across our country is not about protecting things it's not about protecting a species it's not about protecting the uh the air or the water it's about a seven letter word control once they've got control they've got everything do you agree yeah absolutely our group has been a long time because you know i first looked at this stuff a lot trying to figure out logically like, why are they doing it with a clean power plant why are they going to set up a system that's going to destroy our economy and so, like everything else in life, I decided to follow the money. And what you see is, as you said, they weaponize these environmental groups, which used to have very good altruistic reasons. They're using their regulatory powers of the federal and state government. But what you have to do is peel away the level, and which gets to the control factor. And you have to see who is actually putting the money up. And you start to get a whole different view when you look at that. You've got the Rockefellers, who have been in this game for over 100 years, using social their uh, philanthropic efforts and their other efforts, and you've got 
got guys like George Soros, and then you've got Tom Steyer, who's sort of a front line guy now. Ironically, with Steyer, he made all his money in coal-fired power plants, and now he's running around propping up green energy for his buddies. So you get to see a real sense in terms of what this game is all about, and you hit the nail on the head. It is about control. It's about tearing down existing resources. It's about controlling financially, those so the money flows to them. But it's also their effort to essentially control the masses in terms of what they're allowed to do on their own with their own property or their own energy, et cetera. Craig, with the revocation of this WOTUS rule, uh, what about these people? I've got a feeling that these environmentalists and the EPA, the Army Corps of Engineers, these people are just probably sitting in corners right now with uh, hate-filled eyes, gnashing their teeth, tearing out their hair, looking and lurking to come back and do something devastating again. Can or possibly will this executive order by Donald Trump, could it be overturned? Well, it really sends it back to the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers, so this is really just step one. Those two agencies, and hopefully, ultimately, Congress, if it ever does anything, um, needs to, to pass legislation. I mean, that's how our, our system of government is completely turned on its head. I mean, it, it really wasn't supposed to be governed by a president signing executive orders. It was supposed to be Congress creating laws and the executive branch implementing it and the judiciary making sure that everything was in line with the Constitution. But now we're doing everything backwards. Uh, but that's, you know, that's because we've been put in this spot. But ultimately, the Congress has to look at this, and the Congress has to pass laws saying, thou shall do this. And what they did with WOTUS and the Clean Power Plan was they looked, they took the existing Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act, which were very good acts in the early 70s, to clean us up, and they found stuff that wasn't even there. They created stuff out of it, and that's legislating from the executive branch, which is unconstitutional in its roots. So we have a lot of work to do. Uh, on all this, Zeb, and, and this is just the beginning. I mean, he's been in government for, he's been in power for a month, and he's getting all these leaks coming at him from all, every which way, and yeah, yeah, this is a very entrenched bureaucracy that doesn't want this stuff to happen. You know, you mentioned something a moment ago, Craig, and I would be amiss if I didn't have you expand on it. You mentioned the word Congress, and on my program, that's almost become a dirty word. Why aren't the American public, you and I, why aren't we demanding, and I mean demanding, not with our hat in our hands, but really with a clenched fist, why aren't we demanding, whether they're Democrat or Republican, that they get something done? Well, I, I think in part because that's the way the system has been set up. I and mean, let me just tell you, from a, from a pure practical point of view, there's so much money pouring around this town. I mean, I think uh, Peggy Noonan hit it best, Reagan's speech, former speechwriter, when she wrote in the Wall Street Journal, you know you have a serious problem when six of your ten wealthiest counties in America are located around your nation's capital. Mm. Uh, so they come in from Idaho and from Illinois and from Vermont and with, a, with good intentions, but... Let me tell you, they got to get reelected, and then they, you know, they, they start, they slowly start moving off of their conservative position, you know, and, and, and it's a little bit like the boiling frog in water. I mean, over time, they're, they're, so, they're not what they used to be, and there's so much money flowing around, and their staffers are, you know, Washington types. They're not from Idaho, they're from, from locally here, and they're trying to make them move their own way up. And so the whole system becomes enmeshed in, in money and, and power, and then there's a lot of uh, conflicting in, influences by corporations who, you know, there's, in the end, when you think about a country with 380 million people, there are only 535 of them. It's not that hard to figure out what, you know, how to, what, how, what makes each one of them tick. Is it time, in your opinion, and I've said it's past time, to really start cracking down on the issue of let's have term limits other than and over and above the ballot box, let's have set term limits? Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, I think we have to look at fundamentally how the congressional, uh, how people are elected. Not only elected, but a friend of mine actually, believe it or not, has done some research. And apparently, there's, in addition to the ten uh, elements within the Bill of Rights, there's, a, there's one regarding the apportionment of Congress. And his idea is to essentially go back to that and get that ratified, which would basically, instead of 434 congressmen uh, and, and representatives, you essentially would have maybe like 2,500 or 3,000. Uh, I mean, we, again, we, I live in Fairfax County, and, and our county alone here is, you know, 750,000 people. Um, you know, they're, they're, that's 435 is way too few people. You know, think about the ability to, to control a small group like that versus 3,000. So you've got people that have to be much more attuned to the needs of their local community. I, I, I don't know offhand how long we've had 435, but 
I think that as the population approaches 400 million, I think we need to rethink the number. It's, as I said, it's so much easier to control a small group of them, and they become their own little fiefdoms when they run the Intelligence Committee or the Armed Services Committee or the Energy and Environment. And if you just dissipate that power, I think you'd have a lot more uh, return to states like yours in, in Vermont, where it's much more citizen legislature. And, and that, to me, would be probably more effective than term limits. Let me ask you on that excellent uh, uh, statement that you had regarding waters of the United States. Uh, there was an intimation in there that this is really going to be good for, and I'm lumping it all together, our agriculture in this country. When you take a look at what's happened down in the San Joaquin Valley in, in California, the breadbasket to the world, if you will, and also right here in my backyard, southern Idaho, uh, I would say it's breadbasket number two for all that we do, all that we raise, all that we have in agriculture, maybe this is the best thing that ever happened, and there are brighter days ahead for agriculture with this Trump administration. Your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let, let's face like we said up front, the whole purpose behind this is not to save the environment. It's, it's to control not only people's land use, but when you control people's agriculture, what are you controlling in the sense? You're controlling food. I mean, there's not much more important uh, product than that. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we're seeing, sadly, the, the corporatization of America, which is affecting even you know, our agriculture as well, which used to be the backbone of our country, the small family farms. Um, but, you know, it allows the bigger people, like, to come in there, and the smaller farms can't afford the regulation, right? They can't afford to keep up, so what happens? The bigger farm, you know, and the, the agribusiness people come in there and gobble them all up. Uh, so that's part of this as well. Is Again, it's, there, it's a very important resource, and it's also a very expensive way Another challenge for our small family farmers to try to stay in business. Absolutely. So hopefully, again, this is just the first step. We can start to reverse some of this and allow these people to do what they want to do, which is to live in, off the land and provide a very valuable service to those people around them in terms of providing food. Craig, I'd be also amiss if I didn't ask you about this. I mean, I'm optimistic. If if the doggone liberal Democrats would just sit down and shut up and start stop all their protests and try, try to make this country great along with this administration and along with the Republicans, kind of a working hand-in-hand hand together, what about the information that was supplied to us this morning about Exxon? Is now going to put twenty billion with a B, twenty billion dollars back into the American economy, and in the next ten years also grow to where they can add forty five thousand jobs. That's great news, is it not? Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's been this president's really. When you peel it all away, that's what his mantra is: that he is going to work, help the American workers. And the reason that the Democrats, by the way, are so apoplectic is because that's their base. Let's face it, they have forgotten what made that party great. They have forgotten that they were once the party of the workers, and now they're devolved into the party of, I don't even know what, you know, bathroom issues and identity politics. And I hate to say it for them, that's not a winning issue over time. People want to go back to work. They're tired of this regulation. They're tired of Washington. And when they see these guys acting like little school kids screaming and yelling about issues that don't even matter to them, you, you can see that the issues that they really have as a party. Well, you know, when you talk about Exxon, though, and I want your expertise as president of the Energy and Environmental Legal Institute, you, you talk about $20 billion with B dollars coming back into our economy, not Kuwait, not something over in Iraq or Iran, but right here in this country. And then the multi multiplicity factor of 45,000 jobs multiplied by perhaps four or eight in addition, family members, etc. Holy cow, what a boost to our economy. Yeah, absolutely. You see that dramatic change between what we just talked about with things like WOTUS, which is going to do the exact opposite. And again, we've talked about this before, but you don't have to go very far than coal country to see what they've done with their regulations to those poor people of the world. And then you flip it around, like you're talking about the ExxonMobil investment in jobs, you have pipelines coming, you know, those kinds of things. You've got places like North Dakota where the shale is up there, which not only creates amazing jobs in terms of you know, six figures and the, and, the, and the people feel good about going to work and the benefits. But then you have the towns prospering because they've got to hire bartenders and hotels and, and grocery stores. And it's the trickle effect that, that will really re revive, you know, hopefully in places like Detroit will start to come back online again. And, and to me and to people on the show like you and me, it seems so logical. Why did we go down this other road for so long? Why did we get here? 
You know, you mentioned that the uh, Democrats and the liberals are just sitting in corners sulking and tearing their hair out, etc., and they're really worrying about their future. They created this problem. They did not try to work with the American public. It was almost like a dictatorship with the eight years with Obama and the edicts and everything and the cutting back on energy, the cutting back on national security, etc. Honestly, Craig, I believe they're getting every bit of problem they deserve. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I'm a Massachusetts guy, believe it or not, and uh, uh, I was somewhat of a fan of Tip O'Neill, the old, you know, the old dinosaur who ran the house. And I, I think he'd be rolling over in his grave if he saw what happened to this to these to this party because you know they were the blue collar party. They were the ones that got people to work. You know, the Irish immigrants, in particular in Massachusetts, they got their friends jobs. That's what they were all about. And and essentially, they've traded that for billionaires coming out of Wall Street or coming out of San Francisco. And I saw a quote from a teamster that basically said just that. He said they've traded in jobs for billionaires. And, you know, that may look good in terms of splashy events on Martha's Vineyard, but that's not going to get you uh, a critical mass that's going to get you a majority party. You know, one thing I failed to do the last time I had you on the show is basically what is the need or the cause and effect of what you do daily with the Energy and Environment Legal Institute? I mean, really, what do people need to know about your organization? Well, we've actually been in a transition as well. We felt like we were on the outside throwing rocks over the fence, trying to expose through Freedom of Information Act and FOIA the ultimate collusion that was going on in some of these investigatory reports, like I've just explained with uh, Steyer and some of the other ones. And now with an administration that's come in, we had a lot of our people who we work with both directly with our group and those who are around us in the coalition all go on to the transition team. Some people are in the government, so... You know, we're still needing to be, we're still a watchdog group, and there's still people within this new administration that worries us. So we're going to still play that role, but we're also going to try to support this president's agenda, like you said, with WOTUS and the, and the, and the pipelines. We're going to try to put out there what is the free market view of that. How does that help Americans? So that's why we're going to talk about jobs, and we're going to talk about deregulation. Because let me tell you, the corporate media, the fake news, as we all call it, they're, they're, they're singing a different tune. They're making this sound like, you know, we're polluting the waters and the earth and our kids are going to die when they go to the drink water and stuff. And so we're going to try to, you know, put the truth out there basically as best as we can against the very powerful force of propaganda against now, Craig, real quick, and I've only got a couple of minutes left, but I want you to respond to this. Uh, I am absolutely sickened and, and sick of the news stories talking about, oh, the poor Indian tribes in the Dakotas, why? They're going to have their water polluted if this pipeline goes through. Listen. For six years, there were studies to the nth degree to make sure this was safe and not going to cause any problems with the Obama administration. Why are we listening now and adhering to these people trying to cause trouble with the pipeline situation in the Dakotas? Well, because in in, in those cases, the the tribes themselves signed off on that. But we we talk about the Democratic Party and what they've become with identity politics. And sadly, you can always sort of hire somebody to, to... protests or do whatever but but their entire uh approach is boil, it boils down to what i call political theater right everything is made for tv with them so what do you do you can't argue against jobs you can't argue against reducing dependence on the uh, on overseas oil particularly the middle east so what do you do you make it about the the most sympathetic victim you possibly can find and you go find that one or two people or or ten and that becomes your storyline. That's what this is. This is all made for TV in this little square box. And, and I was at the Pruitt hearing the day that he was testifying. They brought him in. They brought him in from North Dakota, and one, one of them uh, started doing an Indian prayer, and she got arrested. And that was exactly what they wanted. That was what was been scripted. She, her PR person got arrested, too. So it sort of tells you what this game is about. I really enjoy visiting with you. You're a straight shooter. Craig Richardson, president of the Energy Environment Legal Institute. God bless you, man. Come back soon. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great, thanks. Thanks, Deb. God bless you, too. All right, sir. Thank you. Uh, real, Like I said, a straight shooter tells it like it is, and we'll have more with him in the future. I enjoy that organization and Craig as a spokesperson and president. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see. Oh, my goodness, the weather. I'll bet you old Wheels is over there just kind of, you know, he's got his hands and his thumbs are going around in circles going, Zab, hurry up. All right, the weather brought to you this hour by Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. CPAs working for 
you. The very best tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, payroll services, retirement planning, all of this and so much more. They are the professionals that have been providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. Don't forget Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and company serving you. Right now, here's the weather. Here is your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch. We are looking at uh, afternoon rain showers. We're going to see some sunshine at least through the morning time, and then more clouds are going to be rolling in. 50% chance of afternoon rain showers for today, high of 43. Tonight we do have a 50% chance of rain showers with a low of 38. For tomorrow, partly cloudy skies, high of 52. And then for Thursday, bridging nearly 60 degrees, mostly cloudy skies, high of 57. That is your weather for Seventh Rain. Uh, Gina, thank you. Brought to you by Phillips Oaks, Goodwin Crane, and Company CPAs. The very best serving you with offices in Burley and Rupert. Wheels, what in the world is this about Gina and being clawed by a cat? And uh, my goodness sakes, it sounds like, did she go to the zoo and a tiger clawed her? Or what's going on over there? No, uh, we've had Conway for... Whoa, 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 wait a minute, Wheels. When you say we've got Conway, who in the heck is Conway? You've never heard about Conway, Zeb? A little bit. Okay, well, Conway is our studio cat. You have a studio uh, cat? We we have a studio cat. He's, he, he can be a pain sometimes, but... All cats not, are. He's, he's, he's a great cat. We, uh-huh. Uh, he kind of is our, um, he's kind of like, how do I put this? He's kind of like a, he's for the cat country, and so uh, he's kind of our mascot. So you're and, telling me that you have an egotistical cat that does and whatever, whatever he wants to do? Pretty, pretty much. He's, okay. He, he's spoiled. Well, he's, where did this come in with Gina getting hurt or injured or clawed or uh, almost eaten by a cat or whatever? Well, um, since Conway's only been by himself here at the studio, he uh, doesn't do fairly well with the interaction with other kitties. Uh, and uh, okay, Gina tried taking him home last night. And it didn't work out very well. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. You're going too fast. Again, back up the bus a minute. Does Gina have another cat at home? I believe she has a few of them. Oh, so when you say a few of them, so then I'm assuming that by taking Conway cat home, there might have been what is typically called as a cat fight. Yes. And, and what uh, did Gina do that she shouldn't have done? Try to stop it. You never stop a cat fight. Gina, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Very true. Well, um, so she kind of had something happen with her hand this morning, and so she's... she's. You mean she got clawed and it got infected or something? Yes. Yeah, she had gotten clawed and she had gotten bit, too. Oh, my. Who bit her? Conway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he was having his issues, and he was in that mood where he just... Did not want to listen. And well, my so, goodness sakes, do we need to take up and have a charity? I mean, is Gina on life support, or what's going on over there? <laughs> no, she's she's actually doing pretty good. Oh. Um, it's just kind of bruised and swelled, but uh, she plans on going to the doctor. Wouldn't today, wouldn't you, uh, listen to me a minute, wouldn't you really give like five bucks or more to have been in the corner of the room and heard some of the language that Gina might have used at that particular happenstance? I, to be honest, I'd have to agree with you. I, I probably would. I'd be sitting back in the corner in a recliner with my popcorn and my soda. Well, what did she do? Try to grab the cat by the tail and swing him over his head to get him out of his out of the fight, or what did she do to get bit? It, it seems it seems like with how she has males and Conway being a male, um, it was a dominant thing and. When you got two males that are trying to be dominant between each other, you you know not to... Did she learn a lesson of not taking the cat home with her? I, I think she did. We uh, She brought him back this morning, and he's doing really well over here. He was actually pretty vocal and uh, had a little peppy attitude this morning. So A little peppy attitude. Yeah, kind of like uh, when a girl is being sassy. I, I will say this. Had Conway bitten me, 
there wouldn't have been any more problems in the future. <laughs> Needless to say, just read between the lines, young man. Anyhow, she's going to be all right, though, isn't she? Yes, she she will be okay. And um, she has a hand the size of a Spalding basketball. Pretty, pretty close to it. I came uh. in this morning and we were talking and stuff like that, and I was you know talking about something and i just kind of noticed it caught my eye and yeah well i mean when you got a hand the size of a basketball that looks like if you put helium in it it could fly over the rose bowl with a camera on it evidently she's got a problem that, that's very true i'm i'm surprised that they didn't end up figuring out uh what cat tasted like uh. <laughs> Okay, Wheels. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Hey, don't forget, Ag Express is looking for drivers. That's right. They're looking for full and part-time positions, and they're even checking on retired folks that want a job. Hey, they'll work around your schedule two or three days a week. Whatever works best for you. New and maintained equipment, vacations and benefits. Oh, my goodness. What are you waiting for? Call Dale and Paul at 438-8886. Allen and Twin Falls at 7 Three one two four nine five and Russ and Burley at four three one seven one seven five. Yup, yup. Ag Express looking for drivers. You call them today. Take care of it. Don't forget. Well, he walked in the house about a minute ago, and he's out in the other room, and that means, of course, that Dr. History is alive and well and will be on our program in the next segment coming up in just a little bit. Quick reminder, Lunch Bunch will be on March 16th at Denny's, America's Diner, and we certainly appreciate uh, all your patience. We, we've had a terrible time trying to get everything with the weather for the last three months for our lunch bunch and i'm going to do it whether i have to float a boat to burley to get there next thursday and it's going to be at 11 30 at america's diner and that's of course denny's restaurant in burley don't you forget that we are going to take a little break right now and have our cbs news come in and kind of disrupt everything we've put together and uh we'll be back in just a little bit with dr history and then at 10 30 this morning we're going to be talking to, and I believe her title is that she's the Minidoka treasurer and uh, in the treasury department or whatever. I, I want to make sure when I talk to her, a lovely lady, Laura Twist, is going to be talking about what happens when people become in arrears with their property taxes here in this area. And yesterday we had a story about what happened in Michigan with a county called Van Buren County in Michigan. They basically sold the property and then kept the excess to themselves. So we're going to find out what the difference is between Idaho and Michigan with Laura Twist. That's coming up at 10.30. Right now, Wheels, take it away. Look out for the cat. Wheels, look out for the cat. Oh, my goodness sakes, we're back in the saddle for hour number three, and fortunately, for me anyway, uh, Dr. History has shown up. He looks good. He brought some armed guards with him this morning, a guy that can shoot uh, all the little birdies out of the sky, and uh, he's a great skeet shooter, and that's his son Adam is here visiting with us, and uh, Dr. History will be on in just a moment. Don't forget Minicasha Sales, bringing you, of course, Dr. History, and they're located at 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport, and the number to call, 878, and the number 2091, 878-2091, and, of course, with all their doors and their windows and their carpet, everything that we're going to talk about in a few moments, brought to you by Minicasha Sales, here now, Dr. History. Good morning, i got to turn your mic on first. You've only been doing this for 15 years. <laughs> hey, Hang on a second. I don't push any buttons. Okay. Well, by the way, uh, w- this is nice having your son. It is. It's great. They've moved back and here in the area. They love the small town really? atmosphere. Back from? Rexburg and Idaho Falls area. Well, that's not exactly Chicago. Well, you know, you know but here it's, here it's friends. You see, every time you go in the grocery store. Yeah, and besides that, the old man will pick up lunch time. <laughs> well, Maybe once in a while. Okay. Burger King. Yeah, Burger <laughs> Well, I like you. You really live high on the hog That's for your big, kids. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Yep. Anyway, what's happening in your world of history? Well, I'm going to... Do you remember that old song about John Henry? No, the steel, steel driving man. Yeah, and then he went up against... Who recorded the song and made millions? 
Tennessee, Tennessee Ernie, Ernie Ford. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, this is sort I think of. Jimmy Dean did the song too. Did I don't know. Yeah. But this is sort of like that, only different. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here we go. You can tell you were a chiropractor. That's right. Okay, here's the name to remember. Frank Tilton. 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 You never come up with Davis or I know. Smith they, well, they or gotta have Jones. Something different. So Tilton. Frank Tilton was a veteran mule skinner. He was the first teamster to see the new steam tractor, which had just arrived in Daggett, California. Uh. Tilton had brought a load of borax into town with his wagons and 20 mule team. And then he was on television with Ronald Reagan. That's exactly like that, right. Yeah. So, he By looked, the way, your son's not old enough to know what we're talking <laughs> he's about. He's probably not. 20 Mule Team Borax yeah. with Death Valley Days. It's an old TV show that was a Western. Oh, yeah. These darn great. kids. So anyway, he looks at that and says, what's that? And there's two men working on this three-wheeled steam engine. And they went on with their oiling and their working and tinkering. And one of the younger guys swung himself to the ground and put out a greasy hand. And he said... My name is Jim Vance, and this steam tractor and I are going to run you and your mules out of the borax hauling business. Boy, that's kind of a rude way to yeah, start a like, friendship. Yeah, it's kind of like so, how you treated me when you came on this program. <laughs> so Frank Tilton says, oh, yeah, and he cut a fresh chew off his plug with uh-huh. his fancy Barlow knife and carefully wiped and folded the razor-sharp blade before answering. And my wife is very appreciative that you don't chew anymore. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just so you listeners know, I never chewed. <laughs> so here's what he says, and and this is a, a way of saying um, you might just end up dead. He says, whistling you a graveyard spot, ain't you? Ooh, so that, that was subtle. Yeah, yeah. So Jim Vance uh, says, you know what? He said, I've been running tractors in the wheat fields for the last few years. They're doing good, and the threshing, they're in the east, and... Uh, but old uh, uh, Tilton says, you know what? This isn't a, this ain't no wheat field. Now, what year was that? Um, yeah, let's see. It's in the late 1880s. Okay, and they were using the tractors per se in, in the wheat, in wheat fields, fields in California. Right. So he brought it out here. Okay. okay. Right. So both Vance and Tilton headed for the borax works the next morning. Uh, the trip to Death Valley went smoothly. One wagon was uh, piled with coal, the other with general supplies. And Frank and his mules led the way, keeping about a half mile ahead of the tractor. Yeah. Well, the big vehicle chugged across the desert, pulling two special heavy-duty cargo wagons and a water cart. And the ground was hard, steering was easy, the front wheel was turned by a worm gear at the end of a long rod, which in turn was hooked to a large crank on the fl- firing platform. Now, giving the crank a twist now and then kept the front wheel headed in the right direction. Oh, well, that's okay? good. I mean, if so, you're headed for a cliff, it's yeah, always good to have that. So you can kind of picture that. Yeah. It's like a tricycle yeah. gear. Sure. Okay. Well, as he watched the tractor grinding steadily ahead, Frank Tilton became convinced that he and his mules were finished. Figured, really? Yeah, he said this. thought this was it. So he figured steam would pull borax wagons from now on. No need to feed and water or hitch and unhitch and... Uh, you know? Well, yeah, but depending on the terrain, well, couldn't he see? Didn't he have farsightedness to see they couldn't go up hills? Well, and... we're going to get to that. Oh, I figured we would. <laughs> I knew. So, anyway, uh, every night a mule skinner, you know, had to unhitch, hobble his mules, feed them, build a fire to cook his supper, and, of course, not so with a steam tractor. You just got off and let the steam go down. And then you had to build a fire to make the your next supper. morning, yeah. yeah. So... Anyway, all Vance had to do was turn the steam valve and shake down the fire. Then the engineer cooked his chow by shoving a long-handled pan through the fire door into the boiler. That's how they cooked the dinner. Yeah. So well, they, they had their own oven. <laughs> well, and Frank says, that darned Vance. Darned. Darned Vance. You sure that was the verbiage that was used? I, absolutely. It I says see. right here. Yeah. That darned Vance sure had it nice. No ornery jug head of mules to pamper. No harness, galls, nothing to do but just enjoy the scenery. Ah, uh, yes. Okay? Well, the big machine pulled into the borax works without incident. Tilton was ready to quit for sure. His 20... Best mules would, could only pull a load of about 38 tons of borax. Okay, And how much tonnage was the tractor? Okay, we're going to get to that. When the steam engine was hooked up and given a trial run, it shuffled along easily with 60 tons. Double. Yeah, so about double. Wow. Yeah. But, uh, and, of course, 
it could go night and day. It, you know, it never got tired. Sure. So, but the day after the trial run, the big engine was given its first full-scale test. Okay, now we're oh, getting down to the meat. Okay. Can I have time for a yes. commercial here? Let's shoot right in. This there. is like those Saturday morning cereals. I know. It's we know something is going to get exciting here in a minute. Okay, and the plot thickens. Right now, don't forget Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport with our old buddies. Zach. we got to get Zach on the program. You know, he's got to come out here and talk to us and everything. You need an overhead door, they've got them. You need an interior door, they've got them. As a matter of fact, we put one, a brand new one on the back porch. Oh, boy, and they can also send over the contractors to do the installation work. Whether it comes to windows or whether it's carpet, whatever the case might be, all you have to do is just give them a call or stop in. They're easy to find at 1321 East Main Street in Burley, Minicasha Sales. And, of course, they sponsor Dr. History. And now, back to find out about the mules versus the steam engine. Okay. Just to catch our listeners up, Frank Tilton is the mule skinner. Jim Vance is the steam engine tractor guy. Okay? It's a good thing he didn't start the Hilton Hotel, since then they'd be called the Tilton Hilton. The Tilton Hilton. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, anyway. So, Frank and his 20-mule team, they take the lead. Okay? They're heading out. Uh, and then there's two guys, there's two guys, Vance and another guy with the tractor. Everything went pretty smooth for the first two days. Then the boiler began to spout hot water and steam. This isn't good, is it? No. Okay. Vance and the blacksmith worked, uh, the guy that was with him, worked most of the night trying to weld a hole in a tank how or did something. They, how did they weld back then? You know, I when they said that, I thought, yeah, how do they weld? Did they You're get, supposed to look these facts up. Uh, and, and that's a good question. I'll Thank see you. what I can find out. I wish you would. Okay. So Vance had figured that the water used to fill the tanks at the plant would be pure enough for the tractor's boiler. But he'd forgotten to allow for the alkali effect the constant boiling off the steam would have okay so the boiler tubes were crusted inside with strong desert alkali which ate into the metal oh just like a mouse eating into cheese this is going to be bad yeah. so about sundown a few days later vance uh, tooted his whistle to signal that he was in trouble Tooted. Tooted. His whistle. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> so Tilton he- held up with his mules and waited, and he was just a mile away from his favorite campsite near a place called Sugarloaf. Ever heard of that? In California? Yeah, somewhere down where there. Where is that in proximity to where they used to cross the desert? I, well, it's down through the Mojave area somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, but the tractor failed to put in an appearance, so Tilton turned his team around, headed back down the trail. With the, with the heavy wagons? Yeah. Yeah, and there sat the miracle of steam as dry as a bone. Uh oh. So after eating, Tilton hooked uh, two spans of mules to the water cart and headed across the desert in the darkness toward a place called Gravel Well. Well, just as the sun rays were breaking across the top of the Black Mountains, Tilton returned with the water. So Vance. So had he went. The guy with the mules went, went and got the water for, for the, the steam engine. Yes. And all the while he was going na 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 na. <laughs> <That's> nah. <right. laughs> well, so anyway. Uh, time he got back, the Vance had some beans and some coffee cooked, and so at least he fed him. So once more, Tilton took a, a short uh, sleep, uh, but he's kind of bad-tempered at this time, not having slept much all okay, night. Okay, so this is the guy that's running the steam engine. Yes. Okay. Anyway, so they started heading out again with his 20 mules, leaving uh, Vance uh, to follow at his leisure, yeah. the steam engine. And later that day, the hard-packed section of the desert was left behind. The tractor followed the wagon tracks into a ba- batch of soft and shifting sand. This isn't good, is it? And the big vehicle stalled. <gasps> Okay. Uh-oh. So again, Tilton was called to rescue, uh, so it took all 20 mules to pull the iron monster from the grave it had dug with its rear drive wheels. You know, and you get the idea here, folks, that maybe the guy with the mules should have probably said, that's tough, Adios. Charlie, you're trying to replace my yeah. job, I'm out of here. Yeah, well... They barely, uh, they had barely been accomplished with another leak when another leak was discovered in the uh, boiler. Oh my goodness! Okay, so this meant uh, another night trip for Frank to get water. He went again to oh. go get water for him, uh, and then a two drink. More alkali. Yeah, yeah, it was the alkali was causing the problem. Oh my goodness! But uh, <laughs> in fact, Frank Tilton said this. Uh, a tractor was as cantankerous as any mule he'd ever. Well, hoped. by the time he got done turning his mules around and getting all that water, he yeah. could have been where he wanted to be. Right. 
Yeah, he would have been done. But So next, they came to a steep grade. Here we go. And it was uh, too much for the tractors, three wheels. Vance piled sandbags on the front wheel, trying to hold it down. But now, can you imagine this? The front end is bucking, coming up in the air. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and the guy's standing on the platform. Yeah. This is not boating well. And eventually, it just simply squatted down, blocked this narrow canyon. Well, uh, this time, Tilton unhitched his mules. Yeah. And made camp, and then he went back. He went once back again. More. This is the third time. Oh my goodness! So anyway, the desert is dry most of the time, uh, but that night it rained. Oh. Well, the water tore down the steep canyon, upset the tractor, tipped it over, and washed away the entire payload of borax that they had loaded. The three men and twenty mules were safe, thanks to Tilton's choice of a good campsite. Wait a minute, back up for a second. When borax got tipped over. And the water hit it. What did it turn into? Like a huge bar of soap? Or what, what are we you talking know, I, about here? I, I, I can only imagine it had to be like bubbly. Because that's what it used it for. It was laundry. How many stuff. ton of that stuff was laying there? Well, he was carrying like, what, 40 ton? 40 ton of borax. Yeah. What is borax, anyway? It, it's just a chemical that is used in laundry and soaps. Oh. And I looked it up. And then I suppose you're going to end the story by saying everybody in Placerville, California, came down there and washed their clothes. That boring. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so like I say, it's the the mules were safe. So at daybreak, the mules were led to the rescue. They tipped the tractor back up, but the rain had left the canyon floor so slick. As laundry soap, he says, the iron wheels just spun, but the tractor couldn't move an inch up the wash. Oh my. The only way it goes downhill. So back it slid to the borax works in the valley. The mules had won. The huge tractor sat there until it was sold in 1909 to uh, some people that had a mine. Its new owners tried to use it to haul ore. Okay, um, but it did poorly on its first trip, barely making it over uh, a grade. And anyway, the tractor was, you know, sick. It was the wrong treatment. Uh, anyway, uh, when it was converted from a coal burner to an oil burner, the new fuel burns too hot for the old. And actually, the the tractor was named Dyna. Okay, so Dyna's alkali crusted inner workings it just ruined it. So on its second trip after daylight, um, it uh, <laughs> it actually blew up. <laughs> oh, can you imagine that? Yeah. So 20 mules hauled the battered remains off the side of the road into the sagebrush, and it was still a traffic hazard uh, because every mule skinner passed it just nearly uh, killed themselves laughing at this tractor laying on its side. So is this tractor still there today? Well, uh, it says that um, this Jim Vance actually went back east and became a locomotive engineer, (laughs) got on a a real train. He was a real wizard at this. And he rode the Wabash Railway. Really? Never said much about it. And then that's where he wrote that famous song, The The Wabash Wabash Cannonball. Cannonball, yeah. And he never talked much about his Death Valley days. Uh, Uh, Ah. He was pretty embarrassed with it. Yeah. How long did they continue then using mule teams to haul the board? I'm going to talk about that a little bit I figured you were. We still have time. Yeah. But years later, about 1932, after the valley became kind of a winter tourist attraction, there was a guy named Ed Grimes and Harry Gower of the Pacific Coast Borax Company. They dragged the steam tractor to a place called Furnace Creek Ranch. (laughs) Okay. And there she stands today. Really? Yeah. A silent tribute to the 20 mule teams. And those long-eared beasts beat her fair and square with a little help from the desert. So they dragged this tractor to this ranch and it's yeah. still there today yeah in what uh, town near what town I, you know i don't know because this is an old article i see this uh this article is clear back from 1962 oh, wow so it's been a while but i just wonder if it's near any place that yeah, i've been down there. I, I don't know yeah. but i want to talk to you a little bit about 20 mule teams yeah go ahead. okay so uh 20 mule teams were teams of actually 18 mules and two horses Okay. Why they the had two, two horses? horses? Well, uh, I'll get to that. Okay. It's always I'll get to that. <laughs> and if I don't, you'll forget. Okay. So they were taxed to two large wagons that ferried the borax out of Death Valley. And this was from 1883 to about 1889. Okay. They traveled from mines across the Mojave Desert to the nearest railroad spur, which was 165 miles over in Mojave. Wow. Now, you've been to Mojave. And it's hot. Yeah. Yeah. So... 
the wagons were among the largest ever pulled by draft animals, and it carried what they call 10 short tons. And I'm not exactly sure what a short ton is. I'm well, sure some of our it's listeners It's just scant of being almost 11 <laughs> almost, tons. <I> guess. <laughs> so in 1877, six years before 20 mule teams had been introduced into Death Valley, there was a guy named Francis Marion Smith and his brother, and they had shipped their company's borax in a 30-ton load using two large wagons, and then a third wagon for food and water, drawn by a 24-mule team. Let me ask you, where was Borax, where was it found, and what was the headquarters for loading all these wagons, anyway? Um, There was a town, Daggett, California. Daggett, California? Yeah. And... Whereabouts is that down there in that area? You know, I, I should have looked, checked, checked on a map, but it's down there along and, the Mojave and, and Desert that's somewhere. That's where the borax was basically found and loaded onto the. I believe that's wagons. right. I I got to check on that. See exactly where that came. Okay. But uh, so this twenty-four mule team uh, took it one hundred and sixty miles across the desert. But now picture this: the rear wheels measured seven feet. Seven feet. That's just a little taller than you and I, Zeb. Yeah. Shaquille Uh, (laughs) O'Neal. But the tires were made of one... They were one inch thick. Uh, The wagon bed measured 16 feet long, six feet deep, constructed of solid oak. Had to be strong. That's a heavy wagon. So they weighed just alone, without a load, was 7,800 pounds. Empty. And 20 mule team. Yeah. Okay. But the first wagon was called the trailer. The second wagon was called the tender, or back action, and the tank wagon brought up the rear, which was like food and water for the mules mules, and and for the people. Uh, So this whole thing stretched out about 180 feet. That's how long this wagon train was. 180 feet. Yeah. And then they had a 1,200-gallon water tank was added to supply, like I say, the mules for the water, and uh, they would refill this water tank at uh, springs along the way. How long was a typical trip from point A to point B? You know what? I think I'll get to that, too. (laughs) Here we go. So, I I think it's in here. Okay. Okay. You know, the teams that outbound from Mojave pulling the empty wagons hauled their own feed and supplies, which were, and this is pretty smart, They, uh, they dropped off at successive camps as the outfit traveled, and then the supplies would be on hand to use when the loaded wagon came back the other way. Really? So that's pretty smart. You know, you take your supplies and drop it off at every maybe three that's or four what, spots. That's what you do when you go to St. George. You I know. leave food at Fillmore. And you leave- <laughs> Beaver. <laughs> but horses actually were called the wheelers. Okay. Now, they, they were the two closest to the wagon. Yeah. Okay, and they were ridden by one of the two men generally required to operate the wagon, and they were typically larger than a mule. Now, I found this interesting, but what what happens is the horses uh, would actually kind of start the wagon moving, really, and then the mules would take off and and continue pulling. Okay. But it's the horses that kind of actually. Gave it the initial start. Really? Okay, okay, we've got a caller with a quick question. It's got to be fast because we're almost out of time. Caller, real, real fast. Go ahead, please. It's fast. Uh, Daggett is about 12 miles southeast of Barstow. Okay. Uh, do you know the area pretty well? Uh, I've been through there several times years ago. Uh, not that familiar with the mines and stuff at all. Okay, real quick answer to this, because I am short on time. Is borax uh, conducive just to that basic area? Uh, As far as I know. Okay. Sir, appreciate your thoughts. Thank you very much. There, now you heard it from an okay. I appreciate your program, and especially Dr. History. All right, thank thank you you very much. Okay. Okay, so the Teamster drove the team. Now, picture this, with a single long rein known as a jerk line. For all for eight, all of that. 18 mules and the horses? And the aid of a long black snake whip. Wait a minute, stop right there, Doc. Here you got a guy that's sitting on one of the wheeler horses, okay, and he's up close to the wagon. And up above him is somebody with a black snake whip? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the teamster usually rode what they call the left wheeler, or yeah. the left horse. Okay. Because he's probably right-handed. To use the whip, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. But he could also drive from the trailer seat and work the brake when they were going down steep descents. That's a very important yes. thing. Now, the swamper, the other guy, usually rode the trailer, okay, okay. the back wagon. Yeah. And in hilly country, he would be on the back action available to... You got a picture of that? I don't. Uh, well, actually, I do. I've got a picture uh, of... Let me uh, see that. Take Holy cow. That. We've only got a minute left here. Okay, let me finish this real quick, okay. Deb. Okay. So the back guy would wor- work the trailer, uh, the brake on the trailer. Now, from the trailer, armed with a can of small rocks, he could throw rocks at a mule that maybe wasn't paying attention. Okay? Uh, but both men were responsible for readying the team, feeding and watering the mules, veterinary cares, repairs to be done. Uh, there was a midday stop to feed and water the mules in harness. And the night stops had corrals and feed boxes for the mules. And a day's travel averaged, and you asked about this, about 17 miles. And it took about 10 days to make a trip one way. Wow. Okay, so ten day, twenty days round trip, but they actually constructed some cabins along the way uh, for the teamsters to use uh, when they'd stop at night. I got to interrupt you because I'm out of time, but we got to talk more about this. This is really interesting. Yeah, do you like the? You see that picture? Of the, yeah, and of look China? at the the tractor itself with those heavy steel wheels. That's Huge. a big heavy dude right yeah. there. Okay, yeah. Doctor History has done it again, ladies and gentlemen. Brought to you by Minicasha Sales, thirteen twenty one East Main. Street in Burley, right across from the airport. Zach and the crew serving you at 878-2091. Doc, hang on just a minute. i got to do a quick commercial, and then I'll visit with you for a second as we'll send it back over to our main studios momentarily. Don't forget on Thursdays, our segment called Cache County School Days at 1010, brought to you by Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue in Twin Falls, and the number to call, 677-8888. When it comes to your outpatient surgery, they can and will save you money. Be sure and give them a call, 677-8888. Ambulatory Surgery Center, along with the Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley. My goodness sakes, everything for the family, all the clothes, all the shoes, all the games, all the puzzles, all the Cherokee scrubs and the shoes, everything for you. Shop locally right there at a Child's World. 1308 Overland in Burley, along with Ambulatory Surgery Center, bringing you Cassia County School Days. Right now, we're going to leave our 20 mule team borax we're going to uh, go over to our main studios we'll be back in about three minutes and now back to zeb at the ranch on am 1230 kbar to reach zeb call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587 and now here is zeb bell oh welcome back always have a nice time with a dear friend dr history i appreciate that on tuesdays hey don't forget the southern idaho women's expo coming up on april 13th right there in burley at the best western burley inn and sponsored by the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, Idaho Central Credit Union, and Idaho Housing and Finance. They are now saying, vendors, it's the time for you to get your booth lined up so that you can promote your business at this Southern Idaho Women's Expo. Boy, your competition is going to be there. You'd better be there. Absolutely don't miss this. Call the Chamber office for more information on booth space for the businesses. 679-4793. 9-3. You call today. Don't you dare put it off. Yesterday on the program, I had Christina Martin, an attorney with the Pacific Legal Foundation. Uh, she's back in Florida, and she's representing some people in Michigan that lost their property to Van Buren County. Uh, because of back property taxes that were owed. However, the county foreclosed on the property and sold the properties for significantly more money than what the taxes were owed. And then the county pocketed the excess proceeds for themselves. And so at the urging of some dear friends like Representative Bert Stevenson and others, they suggested I get a hold of an expert and I do have one on the phone with me this morning and I'd like to say good morning to Laura Twist. Good morning. How are you? I am good. Thank you. And you? No, just couldn't be better, Laura. Laura, what is your official capacity for Minidoka County? What's your title? What do you do? My title is treasurer and tax collector and public administrator and my general duties are to collect taxes bill and collect taxes and safeguard the county's money okay 
Now, uh, reverting back to what I had on the air yesterday, I don't know if you heard the segment, but I'll give you a real short synopsis again, that uh, Van Buren County in Michigan, they had a church and they had a couple of private individuals that were behind on their uh, taxes and the county foreclosed on their properties and then sold the properties for a whole bunch more money than what the taxes were owed. And then they kept the money. I mean, is this customary? What happens here? Well, until about 2008, um, when property was sold on tax deed, the county would distribute the excess proceeds to the taxing districts within the county where that property was located. But the law did change, and now the excess proceeds go back to any parties in interest. It's quite a lengthy process, but they have to apply for those excess proceeds. Um, in 2016, the law was changed to where the counties could actually submit that those funds to the state of Idaho to unclaim property, and they would um, take care of dispersing those excess proceeds. Okay. Now, am I wrong in my assumption, Laura, that it just doesn't sound kosher for a county, regardless of the state, to collect the property, basically take it away from the individuals because they hadn't paid their taxes, and then sell it for as much as in the case of this church that was sold in the property, 12 times the amount of debt. Does It, it just doesn't sound right that they should end up pocketing that excess. Am I wrong? Well, that's what our legislature felt when they changed that law in 2008. Okay. And so um, normally we don't sell them for a lot over what the taxes are. We have had not a lot of sales, so we don't have a lot of experience with that. Um, The taxpayer in Idaho has three years. They become delinquent after three years. We start the tax deed process, and then it takes probably five to six months to go through that process and then the county takes deed in minidoka county we don't we haven't sold the property for about a year after we take deed so those people still have by law up to 14 months or when the county sells it to redeem that by paying all the back taxes and costs there you go you just hit on something that i want to elaborate on because it sounds to me like you and minidoka county and i'm sure other counties uh by the way that's a good question are other counties comparable or equal to the law and the way it's represented like you do over in minidoka county i believe they are Okay, but it sounds to me like a three-year process, and still, almost right up to the final gun, you're giving opportunities to people to come up with those taxes and still retain their property, are you not? We are, and they're notified at least twice a year of how much their taxes are and how far behind they are. We also have to send them certified letters, publish it in the paper. This is all before we take deed. Then we publish again before we sell it. So a lot of these people we have had phone contact with. If there's a way to find them, I will I will have a conversation with them before I ever take deed. Well, you know, Laura, here's the thing I don't quite understand. I mean, like, uh, if a person is delinquent on their property taxes and they know the situation and they know that they haven't uh, paid that money and the county is working with them, you're working with them, and it goes a year, then it starts to go into year number two. Really, in that time don't they realize they've got a problem that could end up with them losing that property don't they understand this i would think so i did have one gentleman that i went to visit when he was just before we took tax deed to his property and he didn't understand the language well so he was not reading the letters i paid him a visit at his house and was able to explain to him although he didn't understand real well he i told him he was going to lose that property and he's been one of my best friends ever since. Smiles when he comes in and pays his taxes on time. He got caught up. So, Well, how do people, and uh, this is very important. I mean, sure, we all have money uh, that we owe to various sources and functions, etc. But your property taxes, I mean, a lot of the property taxes, are they not paid through your mortgage, kind of an inclusive debt and bill? Uh, how do they fall so far behind? 
Well, a lot of, if you have a mortgage, it's possible they could be paid that way, but a lot of people have their mortgages paid off, and, and you know, there are hardships, but I think there's a lot of mismanagement of personal finances, too. But if there is a dire hardship and those people come in and apply with the county commissioners, say someone fell ill, and they they would consider canceling for one year uh-huh. those taxes. Uh-huh. But it has to be a dire emergency. It can't be just because they've mismanaged their own money. And, Laura, I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, that even with the assumption of saying, okay, I know you've had medical problems, I know that your wife and you perhaps have had a lot of hospital debt, etc., so we will forgive the debt for one period of a year, but now, what about the interest? That would go along with it. I see. But really, when I hear stories about uh, Big Brother government taking over land like they're doing in Van Puren County, it sounds to me like Minidoka County and the law in Idaho has much more of a heart. I think so, and I don't know how long it was for that county. Was it two years or three years? Was it one year? I don't know. I am trying to find that as we speak, and I am thinking it was uh, three years, but please don't hold me to that. But, you know, when I hear stories like this, and then the law has to get involved, the property owner, I can really have heartfelt sympathy for these people, especially this church, because they were also running a summer camp for uh, students in the inner city in Chicago to try to get out of town and try to really learn to appreciate life. And then when you hear that uh, they lost the property and the county made 12 times the money, it does give you a cold, hard feeling against government, doesn't it? I can understand that, yes. We have a caller with a question for you, so stand by. Caller, go ahead, please. You're on the air with Laura Twist. Please go ahead. Yes, when does your interest start, and, like, what percentage is it? How, how much? That's okay, a good the question. the interest starts on Jan- January 1st of the year, <clears throat> excuse me, after it becomes delinquent. And it's a statutory rate, the whole state. It's 1% a month, so that's 12% per annum. You know, when you got into this job as treasurer, tell us a little bit about maybe people don't know what you do. I mean, what's a day in the life of going to your office, turning the lock on the door, and sitting down at your desk? What do you do every day? So we accept all the money from the whole county on a daily basis. All the departments bring us their money, and we bank that money. We collect property taxes every day of the year. And right now, between January and April 15th, we accept applications for the property tax reduction for senior citizens and disabled people. It's done in most counties. It's done in the assessor's office, but in Mendoca County, it's done in mine. I see. How many years have you been doing this, Laura? I've actually been treasurer for about 20, almost 21 years. Oh, my goodness. And and really, I would think going to the office and sitting down at the desk and doing this every day, doesn't it get kind of mundane? Doesn't it get kind of ho-hum? Or is there a change every day? It's basically the same every day, but I get to see different people and different taxpayers every day. So... That's a change-up. <laughs> I have heard people say that you are so nice and so personable, and Minidoka County and other counties in this area have been so willing to work with people and try to make sure they don't lose their property through the back taxes, and I think that's very commendable. Do you have any other stories that you'd like to share with us about your job this morning? Oh, I probably have a lot, but I can't think of any right at the moment. (laughs) We have one more call with a question. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Thank you. Good morning, Zip. Good program. I want to compliment uh, Laura. She has, uh, for the entire time that I've known her, for 17 years, and dealt with her in the office. She has not only been charming and gracious, but she knows her job. And uh, there's never been a difference in her personality. She's been right to it. And the other thing is, is that the uh, women who work with her are equally uh, competent and nice and and pleasant and with it. And I uh, just got, can't say more about that office and uh, how she runs it. So I just want to thank you for having her on today. You're very welcome, and thank you, sir, for that phone call. That was a nice compliment, uh, Laura. That was wonderful, and I... <clears throat> 
would like to reiterate the people I have in my office go above and beyond, and we we really try to work with people and help them out. And so, yeah, thank you for that compliment. I really appreciate it, and it is true. They are great girls. Now, I told you yesterday on the phone when I called and asked you to come on the radio, I said, when it's done, you're probably going to say, oh, please, let's stay on longer. Well, we've got one more phone call, (laughs) so stand by. Caller, go ahead with your comment, please. Yeah, I had a question, actually. It refers to this. Uh, in the case of a, a person who passes away, and there are no, there's no family left, there's nobody to pay the taxes. Uh, what happens in that case? And then also, what happens if there is a lien by the state of Idaho for a Medicaid uh, expenses that were incurred by that person? Uh, I'll listen off there. Good question. Go ahead, Laura, if you would, please. Okay. Um, you know, if a person passes away, and I had this happen last year. We did sell the property, but I went back and found an obituary that was probably 10 years old online and found some heirs, and they had been paying the taxes. They chose not to pay them anymore because it was some dry grazed land out on the desert. Um, So I was able to get a hold of them, and we were able to communicate with both the daughters. Um, If there's a lien for the state of Idaho, that will, and it's been recorded, the state of Idaho will get the Medicaid lien money. They will get the excess proceeds from the property. Well, you are extremely sharp, and all the accolades that have been heaped upon you for a job well done from uh, your constituents in your area, they absolutely think a lot of you. But now back to my point I made a moment ago. We're all done. The day is still sunny and bright. Well, over here it's pretty cloudy and looks like it's going to snow, but really it wasn't that bad an experience on the radio, was it? Not as painful as I thought. Thank you. (laughs) You're a wonderful lady. Laura Twist, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Minidoka treasurer right there and a very nice lady, Laura Twist, and talking about back property taxes, etc. And I really appreciate her consenting to come on the program. Thank you very much. We've got a weather forecast to get to, and it's brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome, the number to call, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Oh, all the different meats are fantastic. My absolute positive favorite oven marinated prime rib oh it's so good you're gonna love all of them you call don scarrow and the crew today three two four seven six five seven they are your locally owned custom meat processor for over 20 years right now here's gina with the weather here is your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch. We are looking at uh, afternoon rain showers. We're going to see some sunshine at least through the morning time, and then more clouds are going to be rolling in. 50% chance of afternoon rain showers for today, high of 43. Tonight we do have a 50% chance of rain showers with a low of 38. For tomorrow, partly cloudy skies, high of 52. And then for Thursday, bridging nearly 60 degrees, mostly cloudy skies, high 57. That is your weather for 7th rain. I appreciate it, Gina. Thank you very much. Brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome, the number to call, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Okay, your turn. I've got a couple of minutes here extra, and uh, we just thought we'd have you give us a call at 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I saw something yesterday that if I could have got the license plate number, or if I could have somehow ran this person's car into a brick wall, I would have. It was a very scary scenario. I won't mention where, but I will just say at a supermarket parking lot, I had just, call her, stand by just for a moment. I had dropped my wife off to go inside, and I was at a stop sign in front of the building. And out the door came about 10 people. Uh, One little grouping was a mother and four of her very small children. And evidently the pickup behind me was sick and tired of waiting at a stop sign and passed me and almost ran over the smallest little boy with that mother and the rest of the siblings. 
And all I can say to that truck driver is I wor- I wish nothing but the worst for you because you almost totally destroyed a family. Don't do something stupid like that ever again. Caller, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning, Jeff. How are you? Uh, good, sir. Go ahead. Um, listening to your uh, Dr. History a little while ago, um, this is Christensen Taxidermy over here in Hayburn. And did you know that the taxidermy industry uses borax for another reason other than soap? I did not know that. Just, just interesting for you. We use it for dry preservative to preserve bird skins. It dries and moths proof those skins as we draw them over a mannequin. No, 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 wait a minute. Let me ask you some questions on borax itself. I mean, I absolutely, I'm showing some naivete and I'm showing some ignorance, if you will. I do not know back in the 1800s, was borax primarily used as a soap or what was the primary use of it back in those days leading up to modern day times? Boy, now that question I'd have to research out. But I do know in the taxidermy industry they they have powdered borax, and we use it to to powder those bird skins before we draw them over a mannequin. Once we get them sewed, and then we move the bird around and pose it, you know, whether we want open wing or closed wing. Then once that bird sits for a week, then that borax just completely dries out that skin and moth proofs it. But I, I guess they used it for soap back then, but the chemical formula for borax is NAD, it's uh, sodium borate. Okay, now, did you, and you're a lot sharper at this than I'll ever be, but did you ever sit back on a lazy, hazy summer day and wonder who, who realized that by using borax or that material, it'd be good for soap? Or who figured out that you could use it in the taxidermy industry? I mean, where did they come up with this in their minds? I don't know. It's interesting sometimes to do that very thing you said to Backtrack that and found out who who found out that specific process that would work. But I'd have to do some research, like Doctor History said. He'd have to go back and find out a few things. So. All I do is give you what little information I have. I'll tell you what, you are now the main Borax special agent, and I want to know more about it. So your uh, work home study is to find out all about Borax and call me back. Okay, we'll do that. All right, thank you. You know, I've often wondered that. I don't care if it's a coconut hanging up in a tree. I wonder who the first guy was that's laying on a beach someplace and says, gee, I think I'll try to crack open that whatever it is hanging up there and drink the coconut meal or milk inside and able to eat the mush that's in there. Where did they come up with this idea to do that? Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, borax is used as a water softener. If you'll remember, Dr. History said that the, after the water came down and washed the box and the wagons over, it was so slippery that they wouldn't start. It's a water softening agent. Also, you want to know what a short time is. A short time is 2,000 pounds. A long time is 1,000 kilos, which is 200 or 2,200 pounds. You know, I mean this in all respect, but I hate people like you because you're so doggone smart. <laughs> God bless you. Come on, eyes open, ears open, and ask questions. Uh, you're a good man. Thank you very much for your call this morning. God bless you, man. Thanks. All right. Real quick call. I've got time for one minute. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air. That's all I'll need. I don't remember you answering the question why there were two horses on the 20 mule team Yeah, Dr. History explained that. He said that the two horses were used as what they called wheelers. And the horses actually started the propulsion with their power, and then the mules chimed in to really lean into the harness harness and keep the uh, wagon going. He did talk about that. Okay, and the other thing I thought I'd mention, too, about borax, uh, the boron mineral that's in it, during the 1800s, mothers would use that a mixture of that with water to treat eye infections for their kids. Really? Wow, I've learned more about borax than I ever cared to remember. Think of it as soap, but it, it isn't soap, it's, it's a water softener. All right, that's just what uh, the other uh, great caller said. Sir, thank you, God bless you for my education. And it's really helpful, I make my own eye drops out of it, actually. Okay, all right, sir.
Thank you. God bless you for your call. Appreciate that. Holy smokes, if you got a question about borax, you just tune into this program and my listeners have the answers. I'm impressed. Hey, don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers that are doing the right thing always matters to them. And they're having a big spring tire sale. Oh, buddy, they've got all their tires on sale like the backcountry all-terrain tire. <laughs> That is a really good tire for your pickups and SUVs. Don't pass it up. Get in there today at all seven locations. The best in brake service. All oh, those guys know brakes. And front end alignments, your car's kind of pulling over to the right, going into the barrel pit. Don't let that happen. Get in there, and they can take care of it. And, of course, shocks and struts and batteries. Above all, the best in service at all the locations. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Dan. Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and my buddy Randy on Overland in Burley. Nobody better big spring tire sale going on right now at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. I'm late, got to run, which is an oxymoron for me, and we'll be back tomorrow morning at 8.06. Zeb at the ranch, and remember the way things were or the way things ought to be. See you tomorrow morning.